Roundabout Cast. Roundabout Cast, episode three. Um, why don't you introduce yourself, boys? For reals? For real, for real? My yes. name's Bradley. Uh, then it then, then it's Joe. Oh, yeah, I'm Joe. <laughs> Jesus. Special guest Joe. We literally went over this before we started. <laughs> Special guest Joe. We don't know our names, Willard. Uh, uh, my name's Tyler. I'm not the special guest this week. No, yeah, Joe is the special guest, and I'm your host, Willer. Um, Joe's a very special guest today. Everyone welcome him with warm arms. What, welcome, Joe. Joe, Thank you welcome. Thank very you. happy. I'm ha- glad to be here. Um, so one quick thing that I keep forgetting to mention when we start these episodes is to send your emails to theroundaboutcast at gmail.com if you have any questions. For Tyler's mailbag. Uh, well, it'll be everyone's mailbag at that point. Remember that one time we did that? <laughs> yes. Never <laughs> never again. Yeah, we had to retire my mail, mailbag after... The segment, uh, sued. The segment was, was too Sally good. Got, yeah, Sally got sued. Um, <laughs> and they, 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 they're trying to find me right now. I'm pretty sure there's a warrant out for my arrest in, like, Vermont right now. Shit. Yeah. I mean, so, good thing we're recording you live. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, I'm not. I can't disclose my location right now. Okay. Wait, Willard, do the do the people at home know the uh, the email? I I just said it's the roundaboutcast at gmail dot com. Okay, I wasn't paying attention. Repeat that for me, Bradley. Uh, some shit at roundabout dot com. Oh God. <laughs> I'm playing with some real team players here. Um, okay. what, are, what are we talking about today? We're gonna start up with a uh, so a little a little movie happened this weekend um, called uh, Avengers Endgame. Oh, I should bring uh, on the list. Yeah. Which we are not talking about yet because we're gonna take this opportunity and talk about every MCU movie ever real quick. Um, in a MCU movie, uh, quick, a quick lightning round okay, hot, hot I'm, takes. I'm, I'm trying to bring up a list. No, yeah, just, good idea. I, I got just, the list here. Oh, okay. you do? Do you yeah. have it in order? Yes. Uh, Would it be safe to throw out a little wee woo wee woo spoiler alert for yeah. this episode? Oh yes. Um, yeah. Any of the Marvel things would be big spoilers. So, so is this entire? Should we go ahead and warn them that this entire? Uh... Let's, let's let's uh let's. I mean, f- I think the first part of uh the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with the exception of probably Captain Marvel, and uh, I was going to say Tony Stark, but that's not right. In game, is kind of. Everyone's seen them at this point. If you haven't, where have yeah. you been? And yeah. if you and if you really care, you would have seen them. Um, That's, uh, in- I I would like to argue that that they're still selling out at theaters near me, like big time in the evenings. Like no, not saying, everybody I'm has saying, seen that yet. I, I, I know I'm saying that. I'm saying that for in game. We'll we'll do we do what we did before. Just a small like, hey, what'd you think of this movie? And then we'll go into hot topic discussions. Exa- exactly. That's what I'm thinking. By the time anybody actually listens to this, they may have seen it all. Let's hope. It's Let's a hope. good movie. It, it only broke the record by like a four hundred thousand or something. Like it or four hundred million. million, pardon. Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh it was like six hundred or eight hundred million for Infinity War. <laughs> And then now it's 1.4 billion for uh, Endgame, so it's some, something ridiculous. That's only yeah. over the weekend, by the way. So it's a little bit of a hot topic movie. But forget yeah. all that. Let's take uh, let's take a trip down memory lane, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna talk about all the movies real quick. So we're gonna start with Iron Man. Uh, Iron everyone's Man. thoughts on Iron Man? Man, Super movie. The first 20 to 30 minutes of Iron Man is was perfectly executed and everything about Tony Stark and getting you to know that character and really getting you to like like that character and his motivations, where he comes from, and what his change was going to be. Um first three minutes of Iron Man are still one of my favorite like comic book uh like comic book movie kind of segments because you you're immediately thrown into the action, you immediately kind of get an idea of like how much of a prick Tony Stark is. You you're immediately like, alright, here's the idea we ha- we're stuck in this terrorist dungeon. We gotta get out. Terrorist and dungeon. That that's what it is. Um, oh, right there. I yeah. Love it. Uh, but it's 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 so fun, and it's it feels like a it's a it was at the time move so unique of an opening. Oh yeah. That um you know you don't you don't start off with like your your main character being like oh I'm just a average Joe and then I'm struck by lightning. It's it really is just like he is immediately in a shitty position and has to get himself out of it yeah and it's it's a really I fun for, way to, i for sure to think the, the first 
fourth of that movie is probably my favorite fourth, but that's not saying that the other fourths are bad. I just really like how it opens. Yeah, same. Um, just what I can add to this conversation is I'm actually going to say that Obadiah Stane is one of the better villains in the MCU. I actually really like uh, Jeff Bridges. Yeah, he was actually that. He was good. Um, yeah, he had a connection with Tony to when when he betrays him. Like I, I feel for Tony. Um, he he's a good foil yeah. for Tony for what, what what needs to be done. Warmonger, um, I think, is his his special boy yeah, name. He is, he is the warmonger. Yeah, that is a special boy name. My, um, my favorite thing about this movie, and I actually I literally just got done rewatching Iron true. Man. That, that is what we did today. Um, is Think about it, like rewatch seeing the end and then going back to the beginning. It's weird that everything in the end is like normal for us now. We're at the beginning. True. It, like this is back in 2008, you know, and it, it, yeah, exactly. This is 2008. That was like five years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, was, <laughs> I was only 15. Uh. Um, seeing like. Because they had a plan back then. Like, Marvel already kind of was setting up to do something, but they weren't really sure it was going to take off. And then, you know, seeing that when we were 15 and 16 years old, it's like, oh, dude, did you see Iron Man? That was a really good movie. Now it's like, oh, hey, you're going to go see the, the new Marvel movie, right? Like, you're ready to go see it this True. weekend? Man, what a It boom. was kind of an instant classic when it came out. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I think on top of the to that, and this is the last time I'm going to say about Iron Man, is that... They immediately threw out the stereotypical thing for a superhero at the very end, which is, oh, you gotta protect your secret identity, because that was a whole plot line with the previous Spider Man, previous Batmans. Yes. And for the fact that at the very end, <laughs> Tony Stark goes up there and just goes, I'm Iron Man. Yeah, he just owns it. just ends. The very, movie just ends. Very You're important just, line. What? <laughs> so yes. It really it, sets the tone for the MCU and, and future. It does. It, it kind of shows, like, we're gonna. it and, Tyler says before, this is normal, but like at the time, it was completely different. Okay, boys. Um, quick final thoughts. Uh, quick final ratings on Iron Man, and then we got to move. Verdict. It's a good. Uh, it was a great start to the MCU. It's a classic, I think, in terms of superheroes. Definitely six blorks out of uh, you know that many. Six blorks out of four. sixteen blazoops. I'll give it four borks out of five borks. You know, something normal. <laughs> um, all right, The Incredible Hulk. Uh, I don't really like this movie. I Ed, Edward Norton did okay. Yeah. Um, I it was much better than the Ang Lee Hulk movie. I think. Yes. Because you got to see Hulk do Hulk things, and you had like something that was on Hulk level to fight, so it was actually fun. Other than that, I, the only thing I remember that I was really hoping for, and they did, was Hulk go like Hulk smash. He yeah. actually says it. I was like, all right, I was satisfied. That's I all think, I wanted from this movie. Did he do a thunderclap or was this he in a later movie? He does a gamma clap. Nice. Yeah. All right. That's a solid uh, two out of five movie. I'll say there's a there's a small handful of MCU movies I haven't seen. The Hulk movie is one of them. And the That's reason fine. for that is from what I've heard, I, I'm not really missing much. The Hulk yeah. can't carry a movie in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. I, I think... That that maybe predates Marvel in, the in, official start date for the MCU. It doesn't. Well. It doesn't because at the very the end, end credit scene, Tony Stark comes in, talks to Thunderbolt Ross. Oh, and Thunderbolt Ross shows up in Civil War as an important character. He does, yeah, General Ross or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, final final quick thoughts, if any. Two out of five. Two, two Borks, definitely. Two Borks, yeah, yeah. All right, and then already we got Iron Man 2 in 2010. Um, oh, wow. I fucking I hate this movie. <laughs> I, I really hate this movie. This is a one out of five for me. I, yeah. I don't remember much about this movie other than um, Don Cheadle taking over for Rhodey. Yeah. Um, uh... uh oh, God, I don't even remember his name, but Whip Boy, whoever he was. Whiplash. Uh, Peter Rourke. Mickey yeah, Mickey Rourke. Rourke. Wh- Whiplash was a great character. He was cool. Where's my Where's my bird? Where's <laughs> fuck off? Where's my bird? <laughs> I just feel like this movie was all over the place no. and what it wanted to this do. This movie had so many awkward scenes where even yeah. me as a younger like younger man, I'm like, what the? This is so tonally all over the place. It's so awkward. Tony's in this party wearing the Iron Man suit. This is so cringy. And and I, like, oh. yeah. it, it is a stepping stone in the MCU, I guess. It introduces Black like Widow. One, There's that. It's so much less important to Black Widow. character than Iron Man 1 and 3 are. I, yeah. I think two, 2 is very middle ground because it's very much him 
because uh, I remember speaking with uh, my English teacher about this, and if like this is jumping ahead a little bit, but Iron Man One is about becoming Iron Man. Iron Man Two is dealing with being Iron Man, and Iron Man Three is about not being Iron Man anymore. And if you were to take those three movies and just have them be their own trilogy, you can definitely see that kind of path. Because sure, sure, but so like that. That's why Iron Man Two is kind of important, but it's just. I don't think it's done really well. It introduces War Machine. That's about it. Movie sucks. I do like uh, I do like the scene where um, the other villain, the salesman guy, he introduces yeah. his little puny little bomb, and like he has a fun sales pitch there. I, I do remember yeah. that. Uh, um, it's got a good ending fight scene where we true. see uh, War Machine and Iron Man going back to back with each other. Yeah, I think that I think that was the only purpose of that was to introduce. War Machine, the idea of multiple Iron Man suits, dude. Yeah. War Machine in the in the America suit, where it's red, white, and blue with the stars. That shit looks clean. Man, I'm gonna come clean. back to in a hot second, like way later. By a hot second, I mean forty minutes from now. Way later, but yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. Good suits in the future. All right, boys, let's talk about Thor, twenty eleven. Oh, let's talk about it. Uh, Thor is a victim of someone not understanding superhero movies and just taking a superhero movie and copying and pasting it onto Thor, I feel. Possibly. Um, because there, there's just a lot of, like, rehashing of old stereotypes, and there's a, like, I think Thor is, the first Thor is the most formulaic of all of the MCU movies. Like, it's, it you you have Thor strip the power, and, like, he, he doesn't do anything, and then there's only one really big fight at the end, and that's about it. And it's so boring. Uh, Thor has one good line, and that's when he throws. I'll have another. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, what's what's her name? Natalie Portman. Uh, no chemistry. You no know, <laughs> zero yeah, chemistry. No, no Natalie chemistry Portman's there. quick exit. Yeah, <laughs> she's she, in the second she, one. She eats herself out of this franchise pretty early. Um, and probably for the better. Hey, uh, uh, I have I, this movie makes me feel nothing, which is the worst thing a movie could be. Yeah, it, it doesn't make me feel anger. It doesn't make me laugh. It doesn't make me. I feel empty, which this movie is not great. Yeah, at this point, the only reason Thor, like the re- only reason you see Thor, is that you're like, you know, like because the past three movies have hinted at something bigger coming along, and this is the next one in line. Um, and I feel like there is a lot of them like that in this in the MCU, but this one like, really stands out as being just that. Like, you just see it to know who Thor is. And that's it. There's nothing really interesting in this movie. Yeah, like uh, I wouldn't say I hate the movie, but I would only really watch it if I was deliberately like sitting down to rewatch the MCU movies. Yeah, yeah fair. It's, yeah. However, we do receive Loki in this movie. That is true. We are introduced Man, to Loki, which Loki's is one great. of the best cool. characters. But yeah, solid, solid. Uh, Two out of five. I put this below. I, I give it like a one out of five because I, I just I'm so bored of it. And everything's tilted to the side at Dutch angles. If you watch this movie, it's true. There's a lot of tilt. Man, we're shitting on the MCU oh, right now. Yeah, the MCU diagonal, fucking sucks. Those diagonal camera shots. Yeah, what's yeah. like? Now that you mentioned it, there are a lot. This. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot. By the way, this is directed by Kenneth Branagh, who is just a very pompous person that likes to do a lot of Shakespeare stuff. So that's another reason why. Okay. I, yeah. That kind of mm. makes sense. I'd like to bring bring up that like Kevin Feige was involved this early on. Like this guy is the mastermind of the MCU. He's, yeah, he's the producer of the whole shebang. Yeah. Um, yeah. Round round of applause for that guy, even though we've been shitting on his past three movies. <laughs> but let's talk about a movie that I think I like way more than most people, which is Captain America: The First Avenger. Man, Willard, so do I. Yeah, yeah like, I it's a good fucking movie. movie. <laughs> did you say you love it? <laughs> I didn't say I love it, but I really like it. I think Bradley did. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah, me too. I had a weird experience with it because I, whenever the first Avengers had come out, I feel like most of my friends had like seen each of the Avengers origin movies before Avengers had come out. Mm-hmm. The only one I had seen, I had seen Iron Man and Thor, and that was it. Um, and actually, I never watched the first Captain America until this year. So, kind of across the MCU, anytime there was like a strife between Iron Man and Cap and all these movies, I'd always be like, man, Cap's such an <laughs> asshole. Fuck with to-. And then, like, I finally watched the first Captain America movie. I was like, oh, my God, I love him. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> so this good. 
this movie is so fun. It perfectly shows the kind of hero that uh, Steve Rogers is from the get-go. Uh-huh. Um, it's got a pretty good pace, pretty good storyline. I adore the segment where it's like a World War II propaganda. And like yeah. there's this oh, weird yeah. relationship of Cap becomes the comics and he becomes a symbol. And like it becomes really meta in that way. And you get to see him go on those raiding missions where he shoots a gun and he has a shield. And I'm like, yeah. I, um, yeah, the thing about the Captain America the First Avenger, which is a extremely long title that continues with Captain America's... <laughs> Captain America's <laughs> titles get shorter and shorter for each one he gets, I think, which is funny. Um, but I just... But they do a good job of setting up that he is the goody good boy, and I think a lot of people were kind of like... Because you watch Iron Man, and he is the quintessential capitalist person turned good, but still has that kind of very... Um, asshole. Asshole, douchebag, feeling vibe to him. Incredible Hulk has a lot of inner turmoil with himself. Thor is fish out of water, so it's interesting. And I think a lot of people like get turned off from Cap because he's such a he's such a lawful good. Oh yeah, dude, to show shoes like, dude. But I think people don't. I just like the movie though because it because I was just like I just want Captain America to be Captain America, and that kind of felt good that he was he was the poster boy of that. And um, it's unfortunate that this gets just on up because I do enjoy the movie. I think I, I enjoy it definitely more than Thor, more than Incredible Hulk, uh, more than Iron Man too. And I, it seems more memorable to me because there's just a bunch of crazy nonsense that goes on too, like Hydra. I, I mean, so, yeah. the character is very vanilla for his time, though. But that's like that. That's uh. <clears throat> That's just who Captain America is, and it, I feel like yeah. we set up like the anti Iron Man hero in this movie, you yeah. know, which is for a lot, a lot later down the road. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it, I, I thought it, I would hate him to be honest, because I'm like, oh, he's gonna be so boring. But he's the one I feel for the most. Uh, the ending of this movie is one of the best endings in the MCU, where he just yeah. wanted that last dance. Like that, oh, that yeah. shit is heartbreaking. Hey, yeah. He's and he's a man out of time, which which lets him fill the Thor role even better, honestly. Mm-hmm. But like you don't get that until much later, and especially in Winter Soldier, you get it next movie, yeah. which is a uh, Marvel. Well, yeah, Avenger. but like it really, it really, it really kind of shows itself in Winter Soldier. But we're running out of time. Yes. Avengers, let's, let's uh, talk classics, about the Avengers. Super good. This is of Phase One. This is probably the one I'll take down most and watch it again just to watch it because there are so many goosebump shots. And just this moments of like pure yes throughout this entirety movie. It's a solid film. It when it came out, it was a goddamn miracle that it worked. And it worked Dude, so that, well. That was shot where they're all circled up, getting yeah. ready for the battle. <gasps> mm-hmm. Like that, that's always yeah. just a classic. Like anyone can recognize that scene. iconic. I, and, I get I get goosebumps still sitting here, like picturing anytime I yes, see that same. shot, and it's just. That's the movie that kind of set everything in motion. I feel like that was the turning point where people were like, "You ready to go see the new Marvel movie? Yep. Like, yeah. are, like, are you ready to go see the next this, Disney this was a legendary, movie? legendary yeah. event. This, this was the this was the movie that had to work. Like, it was great. Iron Man had to work to kick it off, but Avengers was the one that had to work to make sure it kept going. If if Avengers didn't work, everything would have died immediately. Everyone would be like, "Oh, that would have been cool," but it. It really showed everyone that this is a series that's going to last, and every movie in the series matters for something else. And kind of really shows that, pulls that all together. Just to bring up some stuff that people haven't mentioned before we move on, um, really like the scene where Hulk hoaxes out in the in the car- in the carrier, and yeah. everyone has to work <laughs> oh, together to make sure the carrier doesn't explode and Hulk doesn't kill everyone. Um, really like the scene where they're arguing and Loki's staff is in the center of the frame. And the camera kind of starts going upside down, and it's a yeah. really neat visualization of how the staff is subtly affecting our heroes. Um, yeah, it's a good fucking movie. Good uh, movie. Agent Coulson. Good movie. Oh, good, yeah. good that, boy. That's, Big a, rips. that's a great um, kind of moment, because Coulson's been all throughout these Phase 1 movies. Yeah. And just have kind of a, and you kind of don't realize it until around like Thor or Captain America. You're like, oh, this guy, he's in, he's in all the movies. And then he just dies, and you're like, oh, Wow, that sucks. Especially because you have that great Captain that moment where he has like the Captain America trading cards and is like a big yeah. Captain America fanboy. And it's, it's, it's awesome. Um, um, okay, four out of five for me. Uh, let's oh, yeah, talk. Oh yeah, four out of five. 
I'll, yeah. I'll give it a solid five f- five borks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was it was great. That's borking yeah. good, man. Yeah. Um, let's move on to phase two with oh, Iron Man three twenty thirteen. Iron Man three can shit on and it shouldn't. Decent movie. Iron Man three is great. Yeah, <laughs> That's all the three I have Iron to say. Man. I think it's the best yeah. one. Damn. Well, you know what? That's fair. Yeah. I feel like if you don't see Iron Man uh, three, it really kind of sets like why something that sets some stuff up in the end game that really, if you don't see Iron Man three, yeah. it's like that doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh. <sighs> the little kid in this movie uh, has some relevance later down the line, which was really cool. Uh, yeah. I really like this movie because. Tony starts to realize maybe he doesn't have to just be Iron Man. Maybe he can be himself. Like he doesn't, he he can doesn't, he can protect yeah. the world in other ways. But he also has this post traumatic uh, disorder from going into space in Avengers One, and that it's through dope. line follows into the next like big uh, Iron Man movie, which be a, the next Avengers and Winter Soldier. It follows directly through it, um, and I all feel like that's really good. Yeah, all the way good. to the end. But underrated movie, really solid. I really like this movie. Yeah, um, this is one of my favorite movies as an example of how like a character is affected by a traumatic event. I think it really hit Tony hard, and uh, at least in the MCU, I think this is one of the best examples of a character changing and developing from movie to movie. Yep. There's probably better examples, but I no, love it. It's Man. one of the best for sure. I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, I don't. I really. It's my favorite of the three Iron Mans. Yeah. Um, uh, Tyler, you got anything quick to add? Uh, I, I got my, I got my bits in there. Okay. Uh, the you one, the one things I don't really like at the end is uh, Pepper getting fire powers. Uh, whatever. Oh, the Mandarin. Yeah. You know that was that was my point. I was kind of making a note about was yeah. like because of that experience that that character had. True. It, it sets it up. For her potential in future movies. Yes, good point. Yeah. Um, I like I like that the Mandarin twist. I actually really do like it because it, I don't it like really it. kind of I, I do. I don't <laughs> like it. I don't like it just because it was it was good uh, action potential to have a guy with ten different ring powers. It's it's what Thanos could have been or what Thanos kind of was, but like with a smaller scale, it would have been cool. I, I nah, I I like it. I Man, like it with it. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, uh, three out of five. To, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll give it three out of five. Maybe closer to four. But... Maybe three point five. Um, three point seven five. But yeah, uh, Thor: The Dark World. This is the only movie of the twenty-two movie lineup that I haven't seen. So go ahead. I haven't voice. seen it. I, I, I've, I've, I've literally seen every Marvel movie. Uh, the only one I have not seen in theaters was Winter Soldier. It was the only one I hadn't seen in theaters. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I was upset about it. But anyways, Dark World. Um, kind of forgettable. It has one of the best jokes in all of the MCU. You love uh, it. I'm not. It, it, it's great. It, it went, um, but the one thing this movie does really well is really sell that relationship between Thor and Loki. Like that Thor actually felt hurt when Loki kind of turned bad and that they were brothers and they had some sort of relationship with each other and it wasn't like shitty. It was kind of like a, a decent relationship but Loki just harbored like judgment and hate against like his family just because um hey, that's and pretty neat. yeah yeah it's it it's good for only that everything else is kind of like whatever what are you ready uh, to i'm one of the oh, people who had seen this movie oh. and uh i like it a lot better than thor one it's oh, a lot less cookie cutter and i think there's kind of actually i think there's actually some good character stuff in here but I mean, it's still probably in the weaker half of MCU movies, but yeah, uh, I everyone thought Loki died in this movie. Oh yeah, they really did. Psych. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey everyone, if you haven't watched Endgame yet, watch watch this movie. Take it from me. Um, yeah. uh, Captain America: The Winter Soldier. This is a good fucking movie. This is a good one. Yeah. Uh, this this movie really kind of set Captain America up for me. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh. It's good. I like it. Um, I don't watch it as much. I I kind of mainly think because I. It's not really of... a superhero movie. It's it's the most different out of all of these. I think. Oh yeah, it's very unlike the others. It's a it's a it's a spy thriller in a lot of ways more than it anything. It is. Um, but yeah, um, Tyler's right. This really sets up Captain America Soldier 
Captain America. Captain America, uh, <laughs> Captain America soldier. Captain America really well in his uh, character. It really kind of gets you a much better idea of like who this person is and I and like really the situation he's in. Um, it, I appreciate it, it for that. You see a lot of growth from Captain America, who yeah. <laughs> seems like this already morally good character, and we we see him be like able to not be a robot in this movie like he's so, not going to yeah. follow, follow blindly and and that's the great thing about this it kind of really does a great job of setting up for civil war because it's kind of the 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 thing that starts off making cap think like maybe everything that america does isn't, isn't right. perfect yes yeah. maybe this i should movie, question what we're doing this yeah. movie takes the unquestionable soldier of justice and breaks his worldview by showing him that the government he's been working for has a lot of corruption in it. Yeah. And then you factor in his best friend Bucky, which is a top five MCU character for me. And just the shit that he has to go through and the fact that like he's a, he's a target of the world for something he wasn't in control of and Cap is really hurt by this. And he's finding all these conspiracies and like it's really breaking his worldview. And it, this is the moment where Cap's character becomes one of the best for me. He's also top five for me. Um... And uh, there was another thing I wanted to bring up, which is... Elevator scene. Super uh, dope. <laughs> oh, so good. The Watch. elevator. Um, another dope thing is I really like how Cap and Natasha's friendship kind of blooms in this movie as they learn to trust each other. Um, that one was really interesting because I feel like Cap had always been very leery of Natasha because of her secrecy and her... Uh, she's you know, sketchy. Yeah, yeah. Her sketchiness is an agent, but after he realizes that she's not a bad person because of what he's been experiencing, he mm -hmm. realizes that they can like trust. It's it's a very unlikely Pairing. chemistry. Yeah, and and I also like how it's it's really not romantic. They're just like, hey, I trust you, and I trust you. Um, yeah, they kissed that one time, but you know, it was you it was do for it. the job. Yeah. Um, um great that, movie. Five that's out of five. five for me. That's a five out. This is my first five out of five. I, I'll give a four out of five. I really like the villain in this movie as well. We don't. We we haven't talked about uh, Robert Redford. Bad, bad guys in this movie, but I like yeah. the consistent threat of uh, a human threat throughout yeah, was, the MCU. Was it? Are you talking about Bucky or the computer or like the army men? Um. Uh. The the like uh, the, the bigger thing. You know, the government. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hydra. That's a cool enemy. Hydra in general. Hydra. Hey, yeah, yeah, Hydra. That was dope. I, I was so confused when I got back because I was at camp and everyone was like, Hail Hydra. I'm like, why the fuck are y'all saying this? <laughs> and, uh, but that's all I have to say about this. I'm, I'm kind of done. Okay. Everyone who goes to Boy Scout camps are secretly Hydra agents. This is Boy terrifying. Hydra sleeper agents. Are you Anyways, telling me the Boy Scouts or stuff like that are Hydra? Um, but guys, let's the, talk about <laughs> the biggest black sheep that everyone thought was going to flop and guardians of the fucking galaxy this oh. is this is top hey wee woo wee woo top two alert <laughs> this, i adore this movie i everyone thought this movie was going to kill the mcu because it was so out there it was so crazy everyone's like there's a talking tree and bradley cooper is a raccoon Hell what man. is happening and diesel is a tree <laughs> <laughs> and he only says one line it's so good well, he says two lines. Spoilers. And, um, uh, the thing about this movie, and I told Willer about this, I feel like this movie kind of changed, like... The MCU forever. Both, like, the humor and kind of the presentation of the MCU movies. Because okay. I think after this movie, a lot of the MCU movies started emulating this style yeah. more and more. It was a huge success. Oh, yeah. James Gunn did a, a, a wonderful job very talented that, man mm. prove that there can be creativity in a lot of the movies and they don't all follow the same formula yeah i just there's so much i could gush about i'll try to be brief um just the story of these people coming together i really 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 love losers getting together for a greater good that is like probably one of my favorite tropes if not my favorite um, and outcast and such like that. They do a really good job of organically building all their relationships. Um, there's the way this movie is shot. I haven't really talked about like how movies are shot, except for like the weird angle shit that we were talking about in Thor. But like this movie has so much style and personality to the way it's filmed, to its music choice, to the visuals. Um, the scene where Quill has to put the the breathing mask on Gamora is just beautiful. Um, the scene where he's holding the power stone by himself 
and he's feeling all this hurt. And Gamora reaches out her hand so she can share that pain with them. First of all, really symbolic because all these really broken characters, the whole goal is for them to learn how to share their pain and their hurt, right? So this yeah. is already a really good metaphor for that. But then he sees a flashback to how his mom reached out to him in his deathbed. And he was too scared to take it because he wasn't ready to uh, acknowledge that he was going to feel the pain of losing his mom. That is, That is so good. Oh my god. It's a good movie. I give it a five out of five. Two solid hits for Marvel in five, a row. Five out of five. I'll, I'll give it one a one solid one. five. Really, really gave him the budget they needed for the next six movies. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings, brings us to a big budget big boy, Avengers Age of Ultron. So, oh my God. I think of all the Avengers like collaboration movies, I'm not counting Civil War. because Which we should, because we that's should. Like real Avengers too. Yeah. yeah. Age of Ultron is pretty, it's pretty much last... Uh, I think okay. for me, and and I'm not saying that's bad. It's just of every, everything else is just better than it, in my opinion. I um, allow me that's to. Just... Could, we all allow me to go on a little rant here and steal the spotlight a bit because I'm the only person who will defend this movie to the extent right. that I'm willing to defend it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is one of the best. Uh, Avenger movies. I like it better than the first, and I even edge it a little bit above Infinity War, which is sacrilege to say. But hold on, here's why. I actually watched it yesterday. I was like, why the fuck do I like this movie so much? Um, and I took some notes. Um, Action-wise, this is the best of the Avenger movies, and I'm gonna tell you why. It's really focused team action and shows actual squad tactics. True. With stuff like that first scene where they're in the snow and there's that shot of all the Avengers like it's jumping at once. Oh my god. Language. Good jokes as well. Yeah. Um the, the team has already learned how to deal with each other, and the team is also small enough to where each member has a role. And this is where the other movies start falling apart later on, at least in the action department. Where there's not a single action scene in this movie that's bad. Um, there's a scene where the Ultron bots show up in the party. By the way, the party scene is the best scene in the MCU, hands down. For yeah, that, is, that, is, that is a great scene. Um, the it's... robots show up, and everyone's under-equipped. So you get to see them um, kind of handle the situation at the party uh, without all their weapons. So you got, like, Hawkeye. He, he doesn't really have his bow and he's already hurt from, like, earlier in the scene. So he has to roll around, and he has to assist Cap by giving him a shield. And he has to just to kind of move. Natasha is making sure Hulk doesn't Hulk out because that's, she builds a relationship with Bruce that I actually like. Um, uh, uh, Thor is at his best at this movie. I really miss this Thor. Um, I, T Thor becomes way too jokey, the Guardian of the, gar the Galaxy effect. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He has Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yes, and like I really like this out of touch hedonistic like I'm gonna make quips, but I'm also like this weird uh, Viking he still, asshole. He still has a seriousness to him, which I do agree with you. It's really nice to see and enjoy. Th this was the perfect balance between um, him being serious and him being jokey. Yeah, um, yeah. Really, I think you made a really good point uh, here a second ago, and I just want to talk about that point before you list your other ones because okay. uh, I think it was really good in that, you know, like you said, all these members in this team right now have different skill sets, which would kind of make them better suited to different niches in combat. And until you set, talked about how they actually fit those niches in this movie, um, I didn't realize that kind of in the later movies, they just kind of fight like it's a Dynasty Warriors game where exactly. everyone's just blowing down bad guys. Yeah, exactly. But in this movie, yeah, they kind of fit their roles. There's so, also it's more than action roles. There's also leadership roles where Natasha has her niche of being the one who can connect with the Hulk. And Hawkeye, by the way, Hawkeye is like probably my favorite MCU oh. character, and this is the movie that kind of started it. He's the heart and the ground of the team. He's oh, he he feels like the weakest link. He's very Usopp that way. Um. He's just, he, he, I think I just realized, yeah, that, that's who he is. He's fucking Usopp, but he's also not a little punk bitch. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, he's actually like a guy who got his life together, but just happens to be like way over his head. I, I love the twist where like the whole movie, he's denying having a relationship, like a wife or a girlfriend. And then he's like, we're falling apart. I got to take these guys to my farm. And you meet yeah. his lovely family and his lovely oh, farm. Man. I forgot that was that part was in that movie. This and movie's it's, fucking it's, good! It's, it's <laughs> 
so here's here's the thing about Avengers Day Adventure Ultron, which is why it ranks lower than everything else. And that is because I, Ultron to me is just something that yeah. He the, sucks. It, it's he, yeah, he's he's not a good villain because the main conflict you see rising here is more from in the team, uh, and that explodes later in the war, which I really like. But like, and that's the more interesting part. But like, we get to the the end of this movie, and I just I'm kind of like, and the, when I first saw the movie, I really liked it. I really enjoyed the, the ending scene. But like afterwards, we get to the end, and I have no interest. Or, or feelings towards this whole conflict with Ultron and what he's doing because I don't I don't connect to Ultron in any kind of like basic level because because with Loki we when we in the first movie we we have an idea of what he wants who he is how he feels and like how he feels like you know he was kept prisoner and that he wants to make a name for himself um, Thanos is a is probably the best villain that yeah. they've ever introduced for. Um, for multiple reasons, but Ultron is like he's just so weak, and especially for something that's so <sighs> a threat that gets them all together. I just it that's kind okay. of what kind of kills it for me. But oh, okay, hold on, I got some. Yeah, Ultron. Let me just finish the goods before I get to because yeah. there are bads to this movie, and Ultron's definitely one of them. Um, just real quick, I, I like the plot and the motivation for everyone, which is kind of why I, I I really like the motivation for Ultron. He's like the Avengers. I gotta protect humanity. The Avengers are a problem. Wait, humanity itself is a problem. I'm gonna destroy this whole thing with this floating island, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, and Ultron as an army, and this is like a really specific point. In every Avengers movie, they have to do this big army scene. And oh, yeah. I think only Avengers 1 and 2 really do them super well. And 2 does it best because there's so much team dynamic and I, I agree with that. Like, I think Age of Ultron has some of the best action scenes for sure, like you say. Because it's smaller in team scope. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's just to me, like... But hold I, on, just yeah. l- let me finish my point real quick. Because I, I, we're going quite kind of long on this Ultron thing, but I must because no one else will ever. That was your uh, fault. I know, I know. I, I'm being greedy right now, but I also don't have a topic this week, so this is my topic. <laughs> um, Ultron as an army, though, it's like you're not fighting these weird ass Thanos aliens that come out of fucking nowhere. You're not fighting the Kree. I think was in the first movie. Was that the Kree? No, that was that's part of Thanos's army. <sighs> fucking whatever. Um, you're fighting pieces of Ultron. He is controlling all of them. The robots are more interesting as fighters because they can shoot little pew pews, you know, and they don't they have zero regard for life. So they can do some White Walker like zombie shit where they will just bum rush the enemies and have no no real thoughts. Um uh and the, this movie has really strong character moments which you've gotten to, but uh let's talk about the bad. Um Ultron is half of my list here. He's he's he is a tad too weak, like Joe said, but I don't think it's too much of a problem. Because in Guardian, Ronan sucks. Ronan's like the worst villain. But oh, that yeah, movie's true. a 5 out of 5 because of the characters. The number, way, yeah. the number one way to my heart is really good characters. Um, and but, I think, but the thing is, too, is Ronan wasn't in the movie a lot in Guardians of the Galaxy. Ultron was like every other scene. Which is what kind of drags it down. Him or the Ronan... Maximoff twins, which I, I thought they were nice. Yeah, I which them. is good. I but... like the Maximoff twins, but I think what like deters a lot of people from this movie is like the hex things that happen where she warps their emotions and stuff. I... And it's like, didn't we just do that? That's true. <laughs> mm, but these and, are and... really interesting warpings because I really like the way she gets to Cap and Tony, but one of them is the Thor one, which is terrible. That is the yeah. worst plot line of that movie. And, and it, it makes sense because that's where she obtains her power from. I had to look this up how the Maximov and MCU Mind gets Stone. her. Get, yeah, yeah, she gets it from the Mind Stone. Mm-hmm. But it makes sense, but it was just like, this again, really? We Like, we just did this. I think that was like the main deterrent. It was like the bad guys kind of had some repeated gimmicks and then we didn't feel anything too threatening. If yeah, anything, um, I like how those scenes are shot at least because she does some weird like horror movie like that's true. Weird I remember that shit that looks cool. They, they yeah. like skip frames and like yes. cut her out and everything. It's really cool. But um, I, I'm not once again. I don't think this movie's bad. I don't think it's 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 or anything. I think it stands way above more higher than like Iron Man two or Thor. It's just if you were to lay out every Avengers movie in front of me. Uh, I just would not pick Age of Ultron. I would rather watch the first one than the second one, more often than not. Um, 
this yeah i i also really like the scene where ultron fights cap on top of that uh bus this movie has more one-on-ones which is nice that's true um, all the action scenes in this movie are great it's great. just Best it's action. it's just it's just as a, as a story beat I really was, as a story itself, I really wasn't that interested other than the character dynamics and the action. But the overall uh, kind of reason this thing is happening, I just didn't care for. My, my last point. Plot. My, my, my last point here is Ultron's too quippy and too human. I get he's it's a true. super advanced yeah. AI, but that's actually why I don't like him. He's like, oh, what are the little humans called? Oh, right, babies. I'm like, shut the fuck up, Ultron. You're, well, you know fucking, this. you're connected to the you're internet. You're a fucking idiot. And the thing is, too, is if you're going to have them be human like that you need to have him have a more like human thought process as to why he's doing something i kind because... of prefer him to be one note though i would prefer him be that than i, I would either. too but like i'm just saying that if you're gonna have that personality you need to have something else that like him explaining out like you know what he like if he was just like i'm going to enslave humanity or it's like i'm going to enforce like direct rule or like whatever that makes sense but like his plan is very calculated and cold like a computer thinks, but then he acts like a human being. Yeah. And it's just... Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> if I had one more thing to say about this movie, and I promise this is short, um, it's that the conflict that I found way more interesting than Ultron is the kind of conflict on whether they're justified making this global defense system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of the people are like, I think this is a horrible idea, and like, Iron Man swears by it. And well, like, even that's, in that's, Endgame, he's yeah. like, oh, this bullshit wouldn't happen if I could have just made my yeah. fucking defense system. Yeah, and that's a plot line that stays in Winter Soldier and follows through the entire. Oh, yeah. This is such series. an important plot line. Um, oh yeah, for the main yeah. characters, all all the main characters' best plot lines stem from this movie. Actually, like this. This really goes places with every character. Uh, I agree. The, the Hulk, the Hulk plotline where he destroys a, a, like an African town. That was really good. Oh yeah. Um, oh holy shit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. I'm sorry, you guys. We're done. <laughs> four point five. Okay. Lightning oh, round. I'll, I'll stick with the four point five with Willier as well. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Ant Man. Ant Man. It's a funny movie. Paul Rudd's okay. Uh, Paul Rudd's good. Uh, Yellow Jackets okay. I really like Paul Rudd as Ant Man. I um, this movie's a bit too cookie cutter for what it should have been. It should it could have been smarter. It could have been a lot more entertaining in that regard and its plot. But otherwise, I enjoy this movie. Fun action scenes. Paul Rudd is a great anti-hero that has no growth and knows who he is. (laughs) Yeah, you know what? Yeah, Yeah. he's he's hardly an anti-hero though. He's such a clean thief, but. Okay. He, he is. He, he knows who he is, and he doesn't really need this overall growth. He just like, yeah. Like one of my favorite lines is, "Oh, I'm gonna become a new person." And then like one scene later, they're like, "We need you to steal something." He's like, "Okay, what do I steal?" Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, three out of five. I, I give it three point five out of five. I enjoy Ant Man. I just like Paul Rudd as who as Ant Man. Um, Captain like, America. Uh, Civil, Civil War. War. Avengers two point five. Oh. Yes. Oh, good. This is, uh, this this is. I feel like people like. I feel like comic book people really don't like this movie, and people that just like the MCU really like this movie. Yep. Um, and that, I feel like that's, that's because comic people, book people like really hold Civil War event in high regard. Um, which I can understand because Civil War could be on the level of Infinity War and Endgame in terms of build up and execution. Mm-hmm. It honestly could have been. Um, but that. That being said, I think Civil War is a great round out for Cap and just realizing like, oh, hey, um, this thing that I've been representing the whole time may not be... Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, this thing I've been representing, this this government may not be exactly... does not line up with my ideals. And you have a great conflict between Tony and, and Captain America, which was which is the biggest thing from Civil War that, that matters. Um, you have a great plot twist at the end. Oh, my it God. Doesn't, it doesn't shy away from... Their, it, like in terms of like there's an actual fight between iron man and captain america and that is the fight there is no big bad they have to go defeat or at least they think there is but it turns out that they've really they're just two opposing sides the big bad is is zemo and and all he does is pit these guys against each other and i thought it was great it Um, was dope people shit on zemo i'm like no no, you're you're, zemo was great he's just a dude who almost got the avengers to kill each other that's yeah definitely (laughs) smart yeah Um, i like spider bad spider-man was great this introduces the best spider-man ever yep. yeah that's 
That's all I have left to say about this movie. We also get introduced uh, to Black Panther in this movie. And Black Panther. Fantastic. He was better in this movie than his own movie. He was awesome in this. Yeah, he was he, better. He, he really was awesome in this movie. I feel like he got undersold in his own movie. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a top four movie for me. It's maybe three, three or four. Um, I agree. The... The, first of all, the airport scene's great. Again, it's only like 12 people, so you see a lot yeah. of each character, and um, you get to see them against each other, which is fun. A giant man with the Hawkeye arrow, such a cool Ooh. move. Uh, I don't give a shit about comics. <laughs> this is my definitive Marvel characters, so yeah. like, I, I don't really have that Civil War like holiness. Yeah, um, I, I get that. Um, yeah. there, I, I really like the ending of this movie. Because because so I was seeing there's like all right this is what's gonna happen at the very end they they were setting up they were telling you they were like literally yelling at you like what the ending was gonna be um or what they wanted you to think it was gonna be and they're like nah you, you nah it, that's not it it's Captain America and and um Iron Man having just fighting each other and it's great and it really kind of it's great I think it does what it sets up to do the, the um, last five fight... out five. Yeah. The last fight is uh, incredible. It's so emotionally charged. He killed my mom, says Stark, as he looks really sad. And yeah. Cap is just, like, trying to fight for his friend's soul. It's heartbreaking, really. Oh, yeah. It's it's a movie that, that shows you, like, I think, in my opinion, Civil War, like, is the like really shows like this is how you give conflict meaning and purpose yeah like this is this is like this is how you build up tension and execute conflict there's like one schlocky scene that's when uh bucky is like hypnotized to escape but that in itself sets up black panther's motivation Mm -hmm. so it's fine um five out of five five out of five yeah hell yeah five uh, yep uh uh, dr strange i enjoyed this movie because it was crazy as fuck but oh, there's not really else going for it. The ending was cool. Mad Milkison was underutilized, and yeah. I wish he was in more things. And that's all I have to say about this movie. I don't, I don't really like this movie. Um, there's aside from like cool uh, fractals, visuals, and stuff like that. Like yeah, this there's like, nothing in this movie for me. I love the visuals of the fights, and it's like I like I guess I like Doctor Strange himself, but yeah. he wanted he, he doesn't. He's not as deep a character as so many other MCU characters. So, yeah. I mean, I enjoy watching the movie, <sighs> but I guess it's like a bottom halfer. Uh, Doctor Strange is actually one of my top tier movies. Hey. I understand we get our second Tony Stark in this film. And <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That, that is a lame thing. But you know what's cool? He's magic Tony Stark as opposed to science Tony Stark. He is a magician. He's also and a cripple. Is- this is our this is our first natural magician that we see in MCU. Yeah. Um, like because uh, Natasha received her powers via stone. Yeah, via the stone. This is our first natural p- magician we see, and we see uh, that this is like a little bit of the celestial e- enemies are coming to Earth now. This is kind of like our segue movie to like a little bit more space like we have loki and we have you know the kree coming there and then thor has his own stuff but like those are like the bigger events and here we see them on a 1v1 scale a little bit uh also we set up for some uh, another antagonist in this movie um the anti-magician at the end of the movie um, that's true i, I might like the second name. one more yeah but yeah i i like his conflict there Mm-hmm. I, I've always really enjoyed Doctor Strange as a hero, and that's like you know, like once we finally receive Nova, if they ever do Nova, that'd be cool. I'll, I'll be really excited for Nova. But I, I thought John C. Riley at one point was going to be Nova, and I was like, how is that? <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> well, he was he was the Nova Corps guy. John C. Riley going to become Nova, <laughs> and, and then they just leveled out that city. So I was like, okay, well, Nova Corps are gone. Okay, yeah. um, I. Uh... Uh, I know all these characters from fighting games, so Dormammu was really disappointing for me because he's so cool in Marvel vs. Capcom, and he was just kind of an entity in this one, which I didn't like. Uh, well, Two point five. I, I I liked it though that it was an entity. I give it a three out of five. Um, if I can say one more thing about this movie, please. Um, no. like I really liked the kind of final encounter that Strange has with Dormammu. See, I do um, too. The, the sure. iconic, I've come to bargain. And one thing that was always really weird to me is when people reference this scene, and especially when I was watching it in theaters, it, it, it's a very memed up scene. And like in theaters, people were laughing like, oh, this is funny. He keeps coming over and over. But 
uh i was just like i was so like in awe of strange's resolve to get brutally murdered over and over again without knowing that dormammu would ever change his mind um, it was it was played a little for laughs i think uh the way it's shot it was it was for sure but like i i think it kind of where if if Doctor Strange was made in like early Phase Two or in Phase One, he would have had this weird Kamehameha battle with Dormammu where they would clash things and whatever, and that that it would have been just a big old like light fest. And yeah. this, it's really just more of like Doctor Strange is like, I- I'm gonna outsmart him, and I'm gonna and I'm not gonna do any kind of like weird. I'm gonna do just a bunch of bullshit, but I'm not gonna outfight him because I can't, literally can't. Uh, I'm Bradley, not gonna. Did, yeah. Did you have like a finishing it. to your point? Uh, I, I I like that scene. Uh, I'll give the movie three point five out of five. Right. I, I'm with Bradley. Three point five out of five for Marvel meets Inception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, let's move on to Willer's near and dear Guardians of the Galaxy two. This is hands down easily my favorite MCU movie. God, damn, it's so good. I um... uh, Guardian yeah Guardian of the Galaxy two got rid of the one thing that made Guardian of the Galaxy like kind of subpar, not subpar, but like the one kind of bad thing I felt and that was having an uninteresting villain um, and instead put in a lot more character development for all of its characters. It's all I wanted. It's what I got. Rocket yes. seals the show. It's amazing. And it's, it's, it's really wonderful. And the nice thing about Guardians 2 is that I think one thing that a lot of the Guardians 1 critics have to say about it is because there's so many main characters, the whole movie is kind of spent introducing and getting to know them. Uh, even the harshest critic of Guardians 1 is now like, well, in Guardians 2, we've established all these characters, so we can just like go full blast into um, just the meaty, juicy core of what these characters are. Exactly. And- and oh my god that's actually why i prefer this one over guard if guardians one is my second favorite movie this is my favorite as far as mcu goes i like this one so much that I would crack into like my top 10 movies period because the way they did these characters in this movie is so good the the visuals are fantastic it cementified gamora and nebula as also like they're in my top five as well along cap and hawkeye mm-hmm. um i the scene where uh, Gamora is just kind of in the field and she's kind of contemplating like what's going on with Quill and his dad, and all of a sudden Nebula shows up in a fucking spaceship <laughs> and starts gunning her down, and you get this incredible scene of her chasing her down the tunnel. That shit is so good. Um, I really like the way it plays with Quill's parentage, and ah oh, man, what they do to show how ego is this uncaring guy who's just using Quill. But it's his real dad that he always wanted. But in reality, he always had a father. A kind of twisted father, but a really good character, which was Yondu. Yeah. Yondu's death is the saddest thing in the MCU for me. And, and that's saying a lot, because there was some really sad shit I went through this weekend. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, um, I love yeah. Ego. Like, he's so different than all the other MCU villains, and I think it just works. He's literally a planet. He's a planet, yeah, boy. A... Are we seeing um, yeah, he's just literally a planet. The thing about Ego too is, uh, God, with that he likes scene, to when fuck. He's, yeah, he likes to fuck. But this, that scene where he's like, it's like, yeah, so I just, I just gave your mom cancer. That's like, Ugh. like there, there, there's something different about like than him just going out and like cutting her throat or just stabbing her or anything because like giving her cancer isn't just like getting her out of the way immediately it's it's painfully killing her over time it's so personal and quill it got is. to see the effect it had on her um yeah it it also shows like he's so uncaring where he's like my son's a god he should be above this so he just says it like oh it's i mean i'm just gonna tell him i'm just gonna come out and say it yeah and he doesn't he's... realize how much of a hothead quill is which factors into infinity war because as soon as quill hears that he immediately pulls out his gun and to, tries to kill his father like it's oh, yeah. it's like this it's a snap yeah and it's it's great because quill has the least amount of time i think in this movie mm-hmm. because we spent a lot of time with him in the first one this movie like, spends we already time know who he others. is yeah. yeah and we spend a lot of time fussing out the others but like that one scene really does show that quill like puts like respect about his mom and like everyone else in his life above everything else and and to, to the one thing that he always wanted like he would just destroy that immediately if it meant that it it would do damage to his mom was 
incredibly powerful. I know we've had arguments with Tyler because he does not like this movie. I, I don't. <laughs> and, like, they all have good points. They are all very good points about, like, uh, the characters, you know, such as Yondu. We get our first Celestial in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the character growth, such as, like, between Rocket and Gamora. Uh, we get uh, Antenna Lady in this movie. I like her. Uh, yeah. Mantis. Yeah, that's and her name. It, it, <laughs> Yeah. It, Drax, that, Drax has that great scene with Mantis where he just sits there and Mantis realizes how sad he is on the inside. Oh. And he just, but, his lack of like knowing how to show emotion just throws you off. But yeah, he's a fucking broken man. Making, yeah, making anyways, jokes. Tyler. <laughs> yeah, Tyler, go ahead. Um, I, I, my main thing I dislike about this movie is that a lot of the writing, like the character growth is nice, but a lot of the, they still try to keep that same jokey universe of Guardians of the Galaxy. And I wish they hadn't, because a lot of the jokes were the exact same. Yeah, I uh, feel like they hit a good balance here, but I could see yeah. that. I don't know, like, fucking group, like, having to fucking find the Yondu's, like, <laughs> like prototype headband and just bringing back random shit was, is one of the funniest things I've ever watched. Gag. That is one of the best scenes, yes. It has a lot of, it just has a lot of hit and miss for me with, uh... It, it was like a lot of like, like I, oh, I really like this. Oh, I really dislike this part, you know? And, uh, and I think that was it for me. Let's close this out. Bradley, why don't you tell us why you hate a certain scene of this movie? Like, <laughs> it's kind of grown on me now just because we meme it up so damn much. But, like, this has one of the... Just, this movie has two lines that are just so... Like, they made me laugh like an idiot when I heard them. Because, like, whenever it's, like, the climactic moment where Quill has to make the choice whether he's going to go with his father's wishes or be a human, um, his father's like, oh, but Quill, without me, you'll be just like everybody else. And if I was writing the script, I'd be like, I would have made the line, like, uh, with like if I don't do this, then there is no everybody else because of Ego's plan. Ooh. But basically... Like, the line goes like this, Quill, uh, if you don't do this, you'll be just like everybody else. And, like, Chris Pratt just, like, squints and kind of has, like, a half smile. He's like, what's so wrong with that? Okay, I watched this scene recently. He does not say it like that, man. No, he's, he totally he's like, that. what's so wrong with that? It was, it was so a lot. Wrong with that. <laughs> and he says, he says, oh, not a bing. And he just... <laughs> I I don't I'm I'm like ninety percent sure that doesn't happen. But anyways, Guardians of the Galaxy two yeah. five five point five out of five. We we gotta go. No, yeah. two, two and a half borks. <laughs> okay, what's next? Spider Man Homecoming. Good five. Oh man. Movie. Oh yeah. God, five, so five many good five. movies. Five out of five. Five out of five. five, five. Out of five. Uh, um, um, Vulture. Uh, they Vulture's did Vulture, great. which is a yeah super lame video video super lame villain in the comics because he's an old dude and make him a really great character. Holy shit! I was I loved him. Great twist at the end. Um, that's all I'm gonna say, and that's all y'all are gonna say because it's a good movie. Five out of five. I, I like just wanna, five thousand. Let me talk about two scenes. Um, no, one, we don't have time. Dude, Aunt, Aunt May is hot. Finally, Aunt May is hot, but that's not a scene. That's just a fact. Um, what a babe. A uh, freaking uh, the scene where Peter walks in to Vulture's house and everything that goes from the car ride to Vulture slowly piecing it together that it's Peter to Peter really realizing how fucked he is. One yeah. of the best scenes. The scene where he's trapped under the rubble and he is just trying to struggling to get out and you're reminded, wait, this is a fifteen year old boy and he's here alone and he's gonna die and like he's yeah. he's half crying. Oh, yeah. That's a that scene is a reference to a very famous scene in the comics. I can't remember what issue it is, but it's it's something that that it's kind of referenced a lot in other Spider Man works because he he's like literally by himself and he's mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And he finds a resolve to like lift the stone off him to like just pull the pull himself together. I re- but anyways, yeah, five five. I was gonna say five I five. really wish there would have been able to be like a little bit of uh, like Easter egg in either one of the movies about Spider Verse. Spider Verse mm. was such a good movie. I I want it to be mentioned in MCU somehow. Or Spider Verse five out of five. Yeah, Spider Verse is definitely five out of five. <laughs> yeah, but All Homecoming right. is too. Uh, Thor Ragnarok. Mm. Oh man, uh, <laughs> a this good is... Thor movie finally. <laughs> yeah, Thor, Thor Ragnarok is one of those movies that I'll, I'll 
pull off the shelf and just watch because it's a good fun it's a good laugh i think it's the one that stands the least by itself because i feel like you need some other things to kind of really know what's happening uh, especially with thor and loki's relationship and just like what the hell like all this other universe stuff is but man is it funny man is it fun um i i have a good it's a great solid just fun time ride with it and kind of that's about it i got one thing to say about this movie you hate it no um i hate the tonal clash it's it's too funny i think that's true there is a major <laughs> tonal clash you laugh but like that... I, I i think this is like a good movie for thor because we get to see him not be thor <sighs> this became meme thor this you know how i was saying i missed like the good in between thor and meme thor gets memed super fucking hard in a couple movies but i, I feel, I four, feel four like when we connect it to in game though and like see why he be like okay he is a meme in in game for a reason yeah no but you're right if he didn't have that loss that he has in Ragnarok and everything. But, but that's an Infinity yeah. War loss, I think. They really built that up in in, in Ragnarok. He's just like, yeah! <laughs> Vikings! We'll Hulk's get to that later, because we, we have like six, four more movies to get to. Bradley, thoughts? Yeah. Uh, we should talk about Aunt May more. Okay. No. She's, she's, <laughs> she's cool. I, 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 I'm with that subject. We can go back to that. <laughs> four out of five for me. Four out of five that, for me too. Four out of five, yeah, that's a good one. So I still like it despite my yeah. problems. Of the few, uh, in, of the very few MCU movies that I have not seen, this is the one I'm most ashamed of not seeing. Oh, oh wow, man. Bradley, that's. You'll, I was very confused. You'll when, get a uh, good kick out of it. Of yeah, you should. You should watch. It's on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'll wrap it with you tonight. We've tried this before. <laughs> Depends on what time we are. <laughs> um, Black Black Panther. Panther. Um, I I like Black it's Panther. Okay. I think it's good. I think. Killmonger is a much more interesting character in this movie, but I still like the movie overall. Mm -hmm. I still like Black Panther. Um, I I I think it's a better it's a better formula movie than the Phase One movies, and that's about it. I have to right. say, right? You know what? That's a yeah. good point. It's it's a formula movie, but it's executed way better than the other ones. Um, than the other formula movies. Um, Killmonger is second best uh, MCU villain. And one scene in particular I really like is when he usurps he, when he usurps the throne after the the pit fight. There's the scene of him in this robe and he was walking to the throne, and the camera inverts and it's upside down as he's walking to the yeah. throne. And it's such a cool way to just say that like he is rocking the entire foundation of this nation. Um, also, the soundtrack for this movie is dope. Pretty fire. I really liked it. Three point yeah. five. Well, one thing I never uh, I, I, I I didn't get my two cents in. Okay. Yeah. I, I was just giving my score. You're good. Prom You're good. Promise I won't take this to a controversial place. Do it though. I promise. Um, <laughs> but you. one thing I didn't notice until uh, it was pointed out to me was how colorful the entire world building is for this movie. Yeah. The uh, all the different tribes and the costume that mm -hmm. each like culture has within their own tribe is very diverse it's very mm -hmm. colorful and it's one of the awards that they won you know at the emmys was like best costumes very ever. deserved and, emmys and, or and, the oscars and, uh, oscar what well, yeah oscars or something. something i don't know I, I don't watch either one it won one of them i agree um wakanda has really good world building wakanda's dope wakanda's a great world i love the costumes all of it, all of it's really colorful and diverse and we kind of get like I, I'm not sure since we're on like movie 19 now. Um, <laughs> we're getting there. Like this is kind of the first time we get to see an entire culture of a world. You know, like we kind of yeah. see a little bit of like Gamora's people or a little bit of like uh, this group of people. True. You know, other than humans. But like, not this to is this the first, extent. Yeah. This, this, is, this the is the first. This diverse yeah. This is culture this is the first see. like fully like uh, Marvel created uh, uh, setting or like culture or civilization like 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 obviously it's, it's like based off of africa and, and dumb future thoughts but like it's just like you know it, it's something it's you can't like point to a map and tell me where wakanda is it's something that's entirely made up and that they're able to like just put that in the world and you're like yeah okay there's an advanced civilization in africa that's been hiding in a holographic mountain for thousands of years yeah i yeah. believe it and, um yeah. I will say very important movie. Um, I can see why it's so like fundamental that this had to happen, because a lot of people get to see a whole movie uh, of their race being represented on the big screen. So I can see why people are really happy for that. Mm -hmm. I give it a Wakanda Forever out of five. 
Wakanda Forever. Let's Wakanda talk about, Forever out of five. Speaking about say these. forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't get a Wakanda pass, Joe. <laughs> speaking yeah. of forever, we get Infinity War. Oh Ooh. my god. Ooh. Instant so, iconic movie. So other than Endgame, uh, Infinity War was what everyone was building up to. Yes. And for... Uh, a long, I, I I went to Infinity War knowing and the, spoilers, but if you haven't seen Infinity by now, War by now, you're you, you've seen uh, the memes. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Go borrow it from your uncle Jeff. Uh, yeah, um, the <laughs> the placement <laughs> of the snap is the thing that got me because I thought the snap would happen like halfway through, and then they would have to deal. They would me too, or, and or something, and they would deal with it later or. I like, like I don't they know. didn't market it as a part two, I don't think. Um they did. Which was they a really said it was gonna idea. be two sections, but I thought it was just gonna be more of a uh I we were like, gonna get more in the part part one would have the snap and then they redo undo the snap immediately, and then part two would be more focused on taking down Thanos for good or yeah, taking something the like that. Infin- something like that. Um But Infinity War is the Thanos movie. Um I, everyone said that before. Everyone's right. Um Thanos' arc in this perfect. It really kind of, and we've seen this purple dude through all of MCU, and you're like, oh, he's just, he's just a bad guy. And then, God, they make Thanos so much better than he is in the comic books. Oh my yeah. God, he's amazing in this. He's um, a, he, he's, he's got a great plot. He has a, he has a better. He's ultimately a better Ultron in terms of just like it's mm-hmm. like I'm gonna just I I'm gonna kill everybody for the greater good of everything. And yeah. it really has he has a thought process as to why he thinks that and why he does it. And he's a madman, but and, you can respect it. I'll yeah, say he's um, one of those characters, kind of like Griffith, where people can be very polarized in whether they think he was justified in his actions. Though I think his is a little more dumb <laughs> than than the other characters that fall in this in this like portion because yeah, it's like, like I've said it before. I think Thanos is fucking insane and i think he's 100 percent wrong but there are people who are gonna but you know what he goes through a good uh villain journey as opposed to a yeah. hero journey yeah. a good journey well it's a hero's journey it's just the villain's the hero but yeah i think it's very interesting how we see the end of it oh okay i think i like how this movie is the end of his journey mm-hmm. and we see that end of the journey yeah. Oh, yeah as opposed to contrasting a certain other movie yeah, yeah. He, like, pu- he puts away uh, his armor and he just goes to a farm. Which man, like, I did yeah. not expect the farm scene. Farm scene's a major meme. No. I know Brad- this meme. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bradley, the most please. memed movie maybe ever. Yes. Um, uh, I'm gonna throw in a complaint. Um, that complaint about big fights, um, losing some of their focus and meaning is uh, at its worst here. I thought the big Wakanda fight was. It had some cool moves, but it was a Dynasty Warrior fight. No, I, um, I, I agree. However, the Wakanda fight, yeah. Uh, uh, just to contrast that, I have very good things to say about the small squad fight of the movie, which was the three Guardians, Tony, Spider-Man, and Strange oh. Oh. versus uh, Thanos with four stones he had, four or five at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. four. Um, this is exactly what I wanted. Like The thing I wanted most out of action and out of Thanos is use of the stones. And he did such cool stuff. When he rips out the moon, it's like, oh, this is so anime. I love it. Oh, dude. Thanos 1v1-ing Tony makes my heart pound. Uh, oh, freaking so Strange doing his Ora Ora 100 fist uh, oh Hunter God. Hunter shit. Tyler knows. <laughs> yeah. I, that, that, okay. I feel like this is the real climax of this movie. It's not the snap. Is It's this fight right there. Because mm-hmm. we, 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 we see this fight talked about in... Uh, in, in part two and they go like you weren't there you know like that that was the moment that it, like yeah the fight on wakanda meant nothing like that yeah. was the real fight and, right there and it's and it's really sold because they won the fight they got mantis to the spot where she needed to be which was what the whole, whole fight was about it's like if we can get mantis on this guy's head we win and then what we were just talking about quill if you appeal to his emotions he's gonna flip and that ruined everything, and people give him a lot of shit, and he deserves it. But you know what? I think that's a good character well, moment. The, the character deserves it. The, the actor does not. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely not. Did he get uh, shit for that? Yeah, people gave Chris Pat shit for like people are playing a trash. character yeah, people are faithfully. Stupid. Yeah, um, but no, but people get angry at Quill, but at the same time, like that's one hundred percent what Quill have done. We've already seen yeah. it tons of times. He's like the most human human person. Mm-hmm. 
like very he, flawed. He's he's very emotional driven driven. Like you, you, you see that in every movie he's in that like emotions guide him to where he wants to go. Uh, um, uh the snap was one of the best, if not the best, movie experience of all time. Um just complete silence and shock and awe. Really really yeah. good, um, in a theater. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's set up uh, for a lot of moments that I don't think people were ready for in Endgame. Yeah. I th- the Black Panther dying was the most shocking to me of like yeah. and and Peter. Them. Yeah, it's like these and motherfuckers Peter. have two movies coming out. What is this? Yeah, and that, I, don't know, I, was, and, I, I had no idea where we were going. After and that's that. kind of the problem because I was like, wait, these two have movies. This is going to be undone super hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like it and and I think we. I, I knew that coming out of it, like, oh, yeah. But, like, I just, I could put that away in my brain and say, like, that's a really cool moment that they actually went through with this. There was mm-hmm. actually, and and the other fact that, like I was saying before, is, like, they didn't, like, do it and immediately undo it. They did it, and, like, as far as you knew, um, it was over. It was done. Like, yeah, from everything an, was fucked. From outside, like, a meta-narrative kind of view where it's like, oh, they have to keep more making more movies so we know. In, in its own story, it is a very finality thing. It's like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, um, fine, anyways, let's give our quick final ratings and thoughts. I'm going to give this... It's leaning between a 4.5 and a 5. Um, it's very close with Ultron for me. Uh, it has I, a way I, better villain, but Ultron yeah. has the better action and a couple of better character moments. So they're close. They're both... Uh, Tied for second or third. So, so it's five out of five for me because once again, it's like you Thanos is a way better villain. It's a more, it's a story that like if you show someone Infinity War and they have a general idea of like superheroes, they can watch Infinity War and understand the weight of it. I feel sure. like you you like a lot of stuff is built up to it, but you really can't just present to something like wow, that was crazy. Um, which I I think part two doesn't do very well, but that's a later topic. Uh, but yeah, uh, but five out of five for me. Four point five for me. Five out of five. Cool. All right. <laughs> Let us talk about Ant Man and the Wasp real quick. Me and Joe watched so, this just the other day. Mm-hmm. So I think Ant Man and the Wasp might be like after watching this next time is really low on my list of movies, which is really sad because I like. Uh, I think it's like the Ant-Man. third worst. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 down there with Iron Man two and Thor. I feel like because it's not because of the scope of it, but just because of. Uh, a lot of hand waviness that just happens in the movie. It's, like its plot is terrible. <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I feel um, like this is a gateway movie. I feel like this is solely a movie used for some setup points. But even it then, is. yeah, you're right. Yeah, and even then, yeah. it's it's plot setup points, not even character setup points, really. Like, uh, yeah, which is really disappointing because the dynamic between I think Paul Rudd and uh, I forget what her Hope. name is Hope. But like okay. yeah, between Ant Man and Wasp, I think I really like the chemistry together. I think they do yeah. great. Um, like and... this, this was a Wasp movie because Paul Rudd gets kind of like he gets, he gets given it. a shitty suit the whole movie, yeah. and it's like he's go- he's just gonna bumble around like an God. idiot, even though he's a smart guy. He's there's, just like a there's, goofy. There's nothing that I hate more than having a superhero movie and not letting the superhero be the superhero. But you know like, that's because Hope was the Wasp was the superhero, and you know what? She was badass. She did a she bunch was, of cool stuff. But like, it's just like it's Ant Man the Wasp. So I would have like seen more well, things they did together. I yeah. I like that we see the grounded human side in this movie and some repercussions because uh, Paul Rudd, oh, yeah. Ant Man, is uh, under house arrest for civil war. I like that. Yeah, man. That, yeah, that's good really plot dope. Point. And and there's and there are, there are two throwaways lines in this movie that are super relevant that no one thought about. This is the um, most relevant for leading yeah. into Endgame. Yeah, which no one thought about. One being that uh, Hawkeye was also under house, house arrest, mm-hmm. which ties more into Infinity War. And the in credit scene, um, Hope Van Dyne has one line that I remember talking to Will. I was like, that's going to be important after watching he was it. Super with him. It's right. like, it, yeah. <laughs> it's such a throwaway line. I, I knew, I guess, what the plot for Endgame was based on that line. And I, when I saw it in game, I still didn't know what was going to happen, like at all. And I was, I was just like, I, I was right. <laughs> it's just, two yeah. point five out of five for me. I, I agree with Willer. Two and a half. I don't, know if, I, I, I don't think. <laughs> um, let's talk um, about Captain Marvel, and then we're finally done with this thirty-minute like section. This movie. That took I almost like an hour twenty. Out of all of us. Yes, you do. I, which is <laughs> shocking to me. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was. 
going I, into it, I didn't expect to like it. I was like, I, I, me and Willow were like, oh, I guess we gotta watch this movie before we go watch. Endgame. Bradley, yeah, I saw we, it twice, and after the second together. time, I was like, yeah, I saw the movie twice, and after seeing the second time, I watched it once with my sister, and then I watched it one other time with my father, and uh, I like after watching it the second time, I was just like, Bradley's gonna hate this movie. Oh like, no, I loved it. I um. There, there's a lot of cool things in this movie for Captain Marvel, the dynamic between um, Carol Danvers and Nick Fury is great. Um, the twist they do on the bad guy, or like eh, the okay. twist they do in like the general lore, I think was really good. I'm glad they did it because that means Ben Mendelsohn gets to be more in the movies. But um, I give this movie a solid like. 3.75 out of 5 for me. I'll give my gripes about this movie. I'll yeah, try to be quick the, about let's it. Let's do the dislikes first, and then um, uh, the grand finale of why I love this movie. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I think I really want to like Carol, um, but she ends up being what I was afraid Captain America would be, which is just bland and boring a lot of the time. And she is uneven sometimes. She's, like, spunky at some scenes, and she's, like... Uh, Very, pissed off stoic in other scenes. She's yeah. kind of all over the place with her inconsistent writing, I think, as well. Like, yeah. I, I, like, there was one point in the movie where Fury goes, Hey, are you familiar with the term welcome wagon? And then another, like, literally less than five minutes later, she goes, I didn't want to steal your thunder. Like, she knows yeah. the Midians, but not the Midians. You yeah. know what? Get fucked, movie. That's a good point. <laughs> um, uh, I actually like, I, I, was surprised we're like out of her weird personalities. I prefer when she's like snarky and angry and she's playing oh, yeah. off of someone else because yeah. when she's like, when she's just like doing shit and Nick Fury is like the, the funny man and she's the straight man and she's like, Oh, I just wanted to let you do your dumb tape shit, but I can blow this, this door up all I want. Like, yeah. <laughs> I kind of like that side of her. Um, and when she's with Fury, her best sides shine. Even yeah. when she's like, she let she lets loose a bit when they're flying away, and they have like a really nice laugh together, like they're they're having a good friendship. Um, mm. And then uh, the action was okay. the The best action scene was when she has her arms tied up, and she's kind of like fighting through the prison. Yeah, at the very yeah. beginning. Yeah, the action yeah. was probably my least favorite area of the movie, uh, especially the big climactic battle at the end against her old teammates yeah that, I, uh, yeah that was too triumphant and like light-hearted with a, with a really with a really shitty not like not shitty but like just kind on of on the no song yes and i'm just like oh, i'm you, just you a girl they, we, we know it's like you think they would better address the fact that she's fighting the people that were her comrades yeah. and people that she's been in life or death situations with for years. They just throw but it away. It's like, I'm going to kick your dude. asses. So I, I didn't like, okay. This, I, I saw this the day before in game came out. <laughs> I did not want to see this movie. Me and Bradley too. Pretty much. I like how this movie set up for, uh, didn't set up for anything really it's set up for how strong carol denvers was as a hero so like she just come out of nowhere mm -hmm. um i i didn't like uh i didn't like the this the build-up to this movie i think this was the the first marvel cinematic movie to actually have some drama involved with one of the actors in it slash actresses sure. oh and, yeah and, it's true. and there was a lot of that and i was just like why it, it, it was very unnecessary and aggressively charged yeah or it's... something that was not big of a deal like she was like oh i'm this feminine i like i'm this female act like strong woman you know and i'm like yeah but you're not the first one like we got you're also Widow. saying a shitty I, I, not shitty but like you're kind of like doing the opposite of what you want to be where you want to be the strong woman that's a role model but you're kind of putting Down other point yeah she's downplaying all the ones that already exist we got yeah. there's black widow the wakandan war the the, Wakanda, the entire wakandan army is female a bunch of badass females yeah yeah um, like it's uh, let's get a bit forward. controversial here because brie larson's actually one of my favorite actresses so i was really bummed out when she was doing that um like uh, her she's one of the main characters in like my probably second or third favorite movie ever which is room and that's when like i fell in love with her like i really like her as an actress she's great 
Um, but she starts using, like, fin- feminism to dispel the actual problems with the movie, which is like, I'm sorry, I really want to like you, and I like you as an actress. Like, it has nothing to do with you. I just thought the script had some bad points. And it's like, it's not because I'm a guy. It's... I, because here's the other problem. Wonder Woman is my favorite DC movie. That movie fucking rocks. And it kind of... It I kind of. So. Uh, That's just me. Well, I, I really love that movie. Um, and it kind of is one of the reasons why I'm not so hot into this one. Because I thought Wonder Woman did like the at least the girl powers aspect. Which is definitely a thing in this movie. Like it has that, that kind of spirit to it. I thought it did that better. It had like a more heroic scene in the trench. That scene is incredible. Um, uh, Wonder Woman is much more fun as a character, and she's written really consistently in that movie, I thought. But uh, yeah, that, that's what I got for, for the little controversy. I, I, I didn't like the controversy building up to it, because I feel like, it, to my knowledge, Marvel didn't have any controversies kind of going up to it. It's like this was like the first one, and it so. was coming from a very controversial place. I was just like everything's kind of been fine up until this point, you know, um, this one just felt very charged for me. And I like, like I'm with you. I like Brie Larson. I haven't seen a lot of her films. My favorite one that she's in is Scott Pilgrim versus the world, even though she's a small part. Who is she in Scott Pilgrim? She is, uh, is she, the man Adam? who has not spoken. Uh, the what's she, one? She's the lead singer of, uh, that band that's in it. She's oh, in the Adams. Yeah, yeah. she's in the Adams. Okay, and I don't that's what that I thought. That's such an interesting like. That's one of my favorite characters. I know she does like a lot of uh, like romance. I think she does like a lot of romantic movies and like Hallmark movies and stuff. She plays that character well, by the way, because I've read Scott yeah. Pilgrim, and she she plays that character perfectly. I feel like she she does that character so well. Room but... is the most depressing movie I think I've I've seen in a long time. It is fucked up. She's great. But guys, my my headphones are dying. Oh, okay. oh no! Uh, that's perfect because we're about um, to take a break because Bradley's gonna close this out. I'm gonna this destroy this fucking movie. Let's do it <laughs> in the best way. Um, I guess. As a as a transition um, to close out, before we move into the stuff I love about this movie, if we want to close out the controversy type yeah. stuff, um, I don't think many people will share the same opinion as me. Uh, I I care zero amount about any controversies regarding pretty much any movie mm-hmm. because, like most movies in Hollywood are made by someone who's either like a pedophile or a racist or a rapist with all these allegations coming out of the past few years. Beyond that, it's also a team effort. You you can't just blame one person. If if I didn't learn to separate the personality of the person who made the movie from the movie itself, there would probably be no movies that I enjoy. Yeah, to clarify, the controversy didn't affect my my um, opinion on the movie. Yeah. It, it didn't. It still wasn't my worst film. Like I enjoyed it. Like it, it had nice chemistry between uh, Carol Denver's and Fury. I, I I enjoyed that. Uh, I thought they were a good combo together. But mm-hmm. I, I it just it it made me not want to see the movie. I guess she told you not to. You weren't supposed to. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Um, um, so are we getting Joe some juice in his headphones or? Uh, you should move on to your positives about Captain Marvel because you actually had some cool stuff to say. Yeah, and I'm glad that we have a little bit. I, I won't try to take too long. I'm glad that we had a few more minutes set aside for this movie. I guess yeah. than other stuff. Um, I think we went. I think we went through like a uh, Ant Man and the Wasp faster than I thought we would. <laughs> yeah. Um. But that's I, on you guys. <laughs> I think it's a very small amount of talking applied to that movie. Oh. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> that was nice, Tyler. Um, so I guess one of the things I might start on is it like going in this movie, I was really I was really huffy about it. I was like, oh I'm so mad because <laughs> uh we we've spent ten years building up all these awesome characters and then Mary Superman is going <laughs> to uh, come in and beat Thanos all by herself. Um, and I don't really think that's what happened. Uh, hmm. uh, it's debatable. We'll I, uh, 
One particular thing I liked, and this is kind of a rather small part of the movie, but I always love when this is done. Uh, in any superhero story, I like it when the power is used as an extension of the character, even partially. Mm, um, you really do. A really good example of that in this movie, the human identity of Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, she loves flying like it's not it's not even work to her she fucking loves it she loves getting in the plane she loves flying around that's her life um and that's what she does up until she becomes not carol danvers uh she becomes a cree um and even with her newfound powers i think going into this movie everyone knew that flying was supposed to be in her power set but we don't see her do it until very late in the movie uh, specifically, we don't see her fly until she finally goes back to accepting herself as a human and identifying with her human self more um, and remembering the strong parts of her being a human rather than the weak parts that the Supreme Intelligence shows her. Once she becomes Carol Danvers again, that's when she starts flying. That's when she resumes that identity of this human who loved flying. And then she flies, and I really like that aspect. Good point. I like that. Um, um, it's not something I noticed, but, but now that you mention it, yeah, they, they did that pretty well. Um, and like I said, I don't know if... Uh, I doubt that's something many people noticed. Um, and I'm not saying, like, oh, look how good I am at... This I, I don't know if they, they probably could have even done a better job at showing that um, but I don't know I tremendously like that um, another thing and this I'm kind of mixed on I'm going to count it as a positive for most of the movie I was kind of in that same camp where it's like I feel like you know her character is kind of all over the place like she'll be snarky then she'll be sad then she'll be kind of bland and boring then she'll be angry mm -hmm. um she kind of has a wide array of emotions and sometimes no emotion at all um and i was kind of like man i don't know how i feel about the performance of this character um some of the delivery of the lines just feel very off to me yeah um and then I kind of finally found a positive spin on it at the end of the movie that made me really like it. Um, so the the very first scene of the movie where she's kind of having her little sparring match, um, we kind of get like an establishment of who she's supposed to be. Um, she's, a, she's an emotional person um, and she kind of has a... Uh, kind of has like a like like a little fighter spirit i guess she she can be emotional in both positive and negative ways um and the kree want her to not be emotional at all they want her to dampen those emotions from when she was human um and i believe that's mostly so they can kind of have more control over her and her abilities um, i think so that they, they want they want her to they want her to basically obey them um, and they do that by dampening her emotions. But this is bad for her uh, as a person because she, at heart, is a very emotional person. And so throughout the movie, the parts where I didn't really like her performance was those parts where you said she was just kind of bland because the parts I really like is when she's being most herself, like when she's fighting and the scroll goes rah and she goes rah. <laughs> that was the best. Or, so that's that's kind of like a more fierce emotion or whenever she's like talking with someone like um like with uh nick fury she's being more serious there but you can tell like she's also having fun with it um she's yeah. not like she's being serious but she's not being like serious serious um and she's, then she's also, being playful and, and taunting him a little bit teasing yeah, and him. i love the moments she's with him i love it when she's having fun fighting i love it whenever she's sad or angry uh i don't like the parts when when she's in a very official situation um and with nick fury she doesn't consider that an official situation uh at all she kind of plays with him yeah. Um, when she's in any situation that she would consider official, I believe, 
that she knows the Kree would want her to act official, that's when she kind of goes into that bland mode. Um, and I was like, man, I don't like the delivery of these lines when she's trying to be too serious. But um, like I said, I kind of found a positive spin and that I like maybe the delivery kind of fails here because she's not being herself. That's not who Carol is. She's not this serious, dispassionate, removed person. She is a fiery, emotional person. Um, and whenever she is showing emotions, any emotion, um, I like her a lot better. I agree with that. I think and, I'll uh, like Carol Denver's when we get more growth and development from her. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. There's probably there's probably a more concise way to say that entire sentiment I just said, but um, no, that that was good. I feel like I, I appreciate it a little more. I'd have to rewatch the movie and see just how much that holds true. Yeah, and I, I certainly have no no reason to rewatch it anytime soon. Um, but one day when I do, I'm going to keep that in mind. I like that twist. Yeah. As it is, I'll, pr- I'll give it like a three, which is not bad. Three's in the middle. It's, yeah. it's pretty, pretty decent. I mean, on a scale of uh, one to five, I guess it's, uh, I guess it it's could be counted above middle if you count 2.5 as the middle. I would count 2.5 as the middle. 2.5 for me. Um, so, yeah, I like all that. Um, I don't know. I, I really like her. Uh, I guess I could go on, but I'd really like to get to Endgame, and there's a f- one or two more things I might say about Cat Marvel herself in Endgame anyway. Mm, I got so things to say. Really we'll, say well. we'll save it for there. Alright, All right. Uh, I think Joe is... Alright, we're recording. Let's talk about P5. No, uh, oh. <laughs> we're gonna talk about Endgame now. Oh, oh okay. yeah. All right. Wait, hold on. Does Willer sound like a robot for anyone else? No. That's me? Just... It's me, Ultron. Yeah. All right, Willer. Wait, hold on. Am I still a robot to you? No, not anymore. Am you I? Sound... Am I a joke to you? Uh, okay. A little bit. Okay, so End I'm gonna happened. put I'm gonna put a, a timer on for. No, I got a timer. I, I got okay. this. Check check well, your. Gonna, uh... I was gonna say for like ten minutes, or I mean, let me look at this. Some messages. You check the messages on the shit, but um, and I I will t- give you some time. I just pass. I just think that uh. Anyways, Endgame was great. Uh, I I literally can't talk about this movie without spoiling anything because. Um, quick, quick thoughts then. Uh, this is my but, favorite yeah. Avengers movie. Uh, it's a five out of five. If you have any interest in the Marvel movies, I recommend you watch this movie. Yeah, I uh, I I agree. It's literally the movie of our generation. I feel like every the past. Yeah. 10, 11 years has been building up to this moment. Um, that being said, uh, you this movie is really enjoyable if you know most, I feel, of the Marvel Universe. It's true. But compared to Endgame, in, in and compared to Infinity War, I couldn't just give someone Endgame to watch it and they'd be like, wow! Um, I think mandatory said, watching for this is, is Infinity War at the very yeah. least. Oh, yeah. Um, that being said, though, is definitely like going forward for me it's definitely like watch Infinity War and then watch Endgame right after it's kind of like watching Lord of the Rings like you need to watch them like right after each other like either same day or the next day it's just they're just so much better when you watch them from part one to part two sequentially mm-hmm. uh, on, on another note like I, I have an experience where as someone who has seen a handful of Marvel movies and they've been like very like yeah they're they're Marvel you know that they're, they're all right um, and then I went and saw Endgame with them, and now they want to know like everything that's happened that was up to that point. Like that movie, the How movie is run? that good. Yeah, my yeah. Uh, my friend literally for the past month has been scavenging every like friend she knows, um, rink dink like streaming service or whatever to watch every <laughs> every single one of these marvel movies and she did it like literally last night she watched captain marvel and it's like all right i'm going tonight oh god <laughs> yeah uh so it's it's just kind of a testament to show that after 10 years that people were willing to make the time to catch up for this event and shit there's 22 marvel movies that's right 22 marvel movies yep I be- yeah, so this might be about- the 22nd or the 23rd. I, I highly enjoyed Iron Man 22. <laughs> <laughs> um, for that's that's about 
on average, two hours for each movie. So that's about 44 hours of movies Content. you have to watch. That's literally two days straight worth of movies. Two days of your life devoted to Marvel movies. Let me let me say something about the MCU as a whole now that we've gotten to the main event. Yeah. Um, the MCU is – they're not the most incredible movies. None of them will crack my favorite ever list. Um, yeah. But um, as an entire entity, this is like unheard of. Mm-hmm. Um, to make so many movies, and they're all like at least threes, threes and ups, two point fives and ups. Like they're all pretty good. Some and of them are those, fantastic. Those two point fives, most of them are just because we've watched movies that have been better in this series. Yeah, they're and still like, visually good. You know, they still got a good, lot of production. Still fun. Like my mother saw Ant Man and the Wasp. Just like, I love that movie. It was so <laughs> yeah. fun. Like that just shows that like they they we're, we're jaded. Yeah. Um. And and people get upset, especially nerds, about things being mainstream. But like the more mainstream your thing gets, or the more the more that people realize how to make your thing a little bit more mainstream, so people can enjoy it with you, it it's it's for the better. I feel um, to a certain extent. Like we don't want to, you know, just overgeneralize everything. But the fact that like you know you can take the concept of Ant Man, which is crazy, like. <laughs> like just the idea Quantum of like, oh, his powers is he can shrink, and my mother who um, has a difficulty picking out a movie, and she's like, I love that movie. It was so enjoyable. Like it, that's a test of it on its own. Yeah, like uh, it. None of them are like they're because of the formula. A lot of them are like formulaic, and they got their same story beats, and they're very popcorn catered to the audience. But when you look at it as a whole, it really creates something incredible. Um, 22 movies that forms a whole cohesive series that has some of the best character development in anything, really, because there's so many movies and these characters, like, the characters are what drives them. Like, these are legitimately well-written characters. Um, Mm. And especially when you factor in that they've got so many movies to work with. Um, Tony and Cap, uh, Hawkeye, like, these Quill, these characters... this Gross movie so wouldn't have worked if it was like the fifth in a series. No. Like you just you just don't have the attachment to it. There there's like you don't you like literally when Iron Man came out, I was what, 14, 13 years I old? I was a little shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like god damn. Um like this is literally a series that we have essentially grown up with. Like we it came out in like a a time where we were developing our like our tastes for things yeah. and like what we really like in things and the fact and this has been like almost background noise isn't like the correct term but it's something that's always comforting and there you know how people um, grew up with star wars i i didn't do that and i don't particularly care for star wars but i i've always had the marvel cinematic universe you know yeah um but it's just once again like avengers was a miracle uh like and 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 Endgame is God, I don't even know. Like it's it's that times a hundred. Big oh, literally. Yeah. Like, the thing is, Infinity War Part One, when that movie came out and everyone walked out of the theater on the first day, everyone just kind of knew that they just saw a part of cinema history. And I don't think anyone would argue with you if you called that movie like an instant legend. Mm-hmm. And going into Endgame. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be an awesome finale, but there's no way it's going to be as cool as uh, Infinity War Part 1. No and way. I was like, to me at least, I was like, holy shit, this is so much even better. I was yeah, surprised like, I liked this more than yeah. Infinity War. And I watched it the second time, and I was just like, as a nerd and someone who really likes the MCU, I like this movie more than Infinity War. I still think Infinity War is a better kind of like, what's this movie kind of deal? Um, yeah. Uh, but as someone who has literally seen every single MCU movie, um, I, I enjoy it so much more because okay. it, it, it pays everything off. Let's talk about the movie now. Spoiler section starts. It, wait, now. wait, before that happens, just quick, just just give your give your just like like five out of five ratings of it or whatever. I you want. I, I did uh-huh. uh, five out of five. Watch this movie if you if you like the MCU. Easy five out of five. Mandatory viewing for the human race. Mandatory. Yeah, five, I agree. Five out of five. If you're watching the MCU and you don't watch this movie, I don't know why you watch the MCU. Like honestly, honestly. this movie it, and Infinity War together might get you into the MCU. To be honest, like it did for for uh, as Tyler said, it, it like that it works like that. It's very powerful. Yeah. 
Um, but anyways, let's talk about the fact that Willer and I came into this movie, and we had an idea of what the plot was going to be, and that <laughs> fucking got thrown out of the window ten minutes in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, they fucking, like, that was incredible. <laughs> that, they killed Thanos in 15 minutes. I was freaking out. I was like, what is this movie? I can't believe like, that wasn't uh, leaked. Like, I, I know. And like, I, what I can't believe is, like, uh... Like, I was sitting there next to Willer, and they're like, yeah, let's go get Thanos. I'm like, all right, time to start the movie. And they're just going to space. And Willer's just like, wait, we're just we're just going? Oh, okay, let's just go. And I was just like, this is weird. I, I saw that part, and I didn't get to see it with y'all. So, but I'm, like, sitting there, and, and I'm, I'm with my girlfriend, who hasn't seen, like, every single Marvel movie. And they kill Thanos in the first ten minutes, and I'm like, what the fuck is this movie about? <laughs> Ex- <Yeah. laughs> I didn't watch the trailers. I only watched the first trailer, which was a really good thing. Because the yeah, first trailer is like, the first 15 minutes only. None of the trailers did anything. They didn't show anything. All the yeah, trailers... Like, good job. I like the first... Like, we get to the five-year part, and it was like the first... Tra- like, we get to the five-year, and everything that was in that first 15 minutes leading up to the five years later was the trailers. Yes. Yeah. With, like, one scene exception, which is them in their quantum suits walking. But even then, like, that's... Walking. Yeah, Ooh. striding, whatever. They, and they were smart because they don't show Thor in that scene. They don't show Hulk. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I'm going to show you Captain America uh, and Black Widow. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Bro Hulk. Professor Hulk. Let's start. <laughs> Professor, Hulk. Let's, Professor, let's talk about Professor Hulk. Uh, Apparently, that's a character in the comics that people were predicting would show up. They just did it. They're just like, hey, he's here now. <laughs> but I love, yeah. Go ahead, Tyler. It, sorry, I was just going to say, this movie is... The, it, I feel like it's the most teased fan service. I don't feel like any other thing has teased fan service for eleven years. Yeah. Yeah. Professor fan service. Man. Fan service was good too. This was fan service done right in in, in yeah, almost every case. Everything they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I love going back to Professor Hulk, but I love what they did. And it really wraps up Bruce Banner. So, like, in this movie, I feel like every one of the, the six Avengers essentially had a wrap-up to their overall, like, character arc. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes. for Bruce Banner, he finally comes to term with the Hulk. And, like, he's just like, you know, uh, Hulk lost first, and then I lost. And then we were able to connect in that way, and we were able... And he has to throw away a line about making Gamma shit to get them together. But, like, the big part is that... They be, they came to realize who mm-hmm. each other was and like meld together and be able to live in like in coherency and like peace and they didn't have to fight over like they could be one person they weren't split personality anymore they were they were Bruce Banner the Hulk mm-hmm. you know? I, I I feel like we got a lot of Bruce Banner not as much the Hulk though yeah sure uh, I thought the mending of their personalities was I wish he would lose his temper more you know like I feel like there's his he's only hulk in the body and bruce banner in the mind i wish there was like a little bit of both because there hulk was, becomes a character scene. in thor yeah there but was we, yeah. sorry we see in ragnarok though that hulk isn't really angry anymore well like we, he is cuz he's still hulk you know but he's like he, he, he does he's, he's very chill now he, he like he just wants to he just wants to fight and eat his he's, watermelons and everything he's primarily like driven um, the thing with that is also like, I really like that scene where they go to the ship in in Thor, and it's one of the one scenes that's not played for laughs, like before and after. It's just like this is the serious scene of the movie, and Hulk sees the recording of Natasha, and he has to like punch himself to keep himself angry because he refuses to go back back to Brand- to Banner, which is why now that I think about it, I'm kind of bummed that we didn't at least get a scene of them reconciling and like going through that. Yeah. That mental issue, which is my favorite part of the Hulk, which is generally not one of my favorite characters, but that aspect of him, I think, is fascinating. I think, mm. I think, like if this was like a comic book, like Page, like like you were reading this as a comic, there had definitely been a part where, like, after huge spoilers, um, Natasha uh, dies. <laughs> we're jumping there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, already thrown in that thing. Yeah, that's why I was just shut that out. Um, Natasha dies, there's that scene where, like, Hulk's, like, looking over the water, and, he, like, he throws the bench, and that's his one act of rage. Like, I feel like there, there's definitely some sort of, like, thought process and conflict going within him, and that's, but once again, and if we were in a comic book, so we definitely would have seen that scene between him and Hulk having this discussion about what to do, and, like, what does this mean, and how yeah. they felt. It, it, and we don't have time for that. The movie's three hours. Okay. Like, <laughs> and we don't um, have time for that. We also, we, 
we also got to structure this this discussion. So here's what I'm thinking. I, I took notes before this podcast started so I could get all my points across, uh, and that'll speed up most of my talking. Yeah, let's do that. So how about I just go over them, um, and then you guys can go over your stuff, and then we'll jump in and out as needed. Uh, oh, yeah. I got some pluses and minuses uh, here. It's a very emotional movie. Uh, I've, I've almost never felt so many emotions in the theater, and I think that's why it's a five right now instead of a 4.5 because i also have a lot of issues with it but the the sheer emotion it makes you feel is unlike almost anything oh willer and joe and i all saw it together and i was crying i was crying heftily for the last like 20 minutes bradley was straight up like bawling for the last 20 minutes i could hear bradley crying and it's just like it's it's like it was like i don't it was pretty deep and like i could really tell bradley was like really feeling it like i was too but and like man, it was both sad cries and happy cries. Yeah, it was very cathartic. Yes. Yeah. I, I cried like a little bitch as well. <laughs> I, I, I did. I, I was. I was. I was a mess. <laughs> On the note of emotions, there were some moments that the theater just went fucking nuts, like cheering. Like we'll talk yeah. about the hype emotions in a bit. Let's talk about oh, yeah. the just a bit of the sadness. I'm not a crier at movies, even though I'm very invested emotionally in movies. I just, I guess I just don't. I've, I've cried like once, and it was at a manga called Gash Bell, and that's about it. <laughs> but uh, what? Uh, but I, I almost broke at the scenes where one when Ant Man saw his daughter grown up. I actually <laughs> Ant Man and the Wasp made me even more invested in their relationship. So that scene kind of fucked me up a little bit. It's like, oh my gosh, he's grown up. Even I was taken aback. It didn't occur to me. Um, and another thing was, of course, uh, big spoiler alert, Tony's funeral. Um, Jesus, man. That was some sad stuff. When they when they pan over to... It's it's happy talking to Tony's daughter. That, that was really painful. That killed me. Not gonna lie. I felt that. I felt that too, too personally, a little bit. Yeah, um, I, uh, yeah. big sads. I just like, I was just like during the funeral, it was just like flashing through my mind all of his iconic scenes. Like in in this universe, like what a fucking legend he is. He's so cool. Oh man, that I think that's that's okay. So like Tony, like he Iron Man is what started it all. Like that was the catalyst. He's the father. Between... And yeah. seeing like I love the full circle, even though it involved sacrificing one of my favorite characters, but it, it was like it involved everyone to beat Thanos, but at the very end it was just a human in a suit of armor. He he was the only one truly pre- prepared for Thanos at the end. Yeah. With with the, with the gem stealing mm-hmm. that that was what made him stand above every single other hero was and on the note of his tyler, foresight on the note of tyler bringing up his sacrifice and since we're talking about his death in general um a lot of people have brought up the fact that you know one of the most memorable lines um from the first avengers when cap and iron man are kind of having their first ever spat is when Cap is like, you're never going to be the guy to make the sacrifice play. Ooh. In the first Avengers movie, he does. He saves everyone by taking the missile into space, but I think that is even more potent in this movie where he actually dies. He saves everyone with the sacrifice play. And it's a big sacrifice play. Okay. Next point I got. Uh, fantastic fan service. Man, going back in time to all the movies, really cool idea. I was really excited. I was on board for that. Um, oh, yeah. As soon as Willer realized we were going back to, like, all the old movies and the MCU, yeah. like, we were like, oh, my God. I was, like, hopping in my seat. Well, <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I mentioned before, like, in, in Am and the Wasp, uh, Hope Van Dyne mentions his time vortexes. I'm like, oh, time travel has to deal in some way. Um, and I thought it was either going, they were going to go back to like the beginning and get the Infinity Stones or change them in some way, or you know go back to Infinity War and do some stuff there. I didn't expect them to go back to Avengers or Thor: Dark World. Fucking of all Thor: movies, Dark, Thor Dark World. Dark World. <laughs> um, but it makes sense because it's literally the only movie the Reality Stone shows up in. And Guardians, yeah. yeah. Um, eh. 
the but the like, idea that they yeah. have to sit there and be like, okay, we have a limited amount of pin particles, and they can only take one person, except for when they take a whole fleet. But we'll talk about that later. We only have like a couple pin particles. We have to find out the optimal places to go to. I really like how they have to sit through there and look at the. They pulled out. They pulled out their DVD case of the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe, and they're like, okay, hold on, <laughs> which movies do we jump to? <laughs> yeah. And I. Uh... It, the, the Avenger ones is the, the going back to Avengers. The first one's the best one because it kind of really does show that there was some sort of thought put into like what was going on and like that they're aware of the connections here. Mm-hmm. Um, because they could have just gone to like like six individual movies, mm-hmm. um, but they didn't. Like the fact that three of them are in New York at one spot, and you kind of had this epiphany moment as an as an audience member as well with them you're like oh my god that's awesome and you yeah. never think about it up until then uh, and it's just like a you know full circle like this is the last avengers movie where all the avengers the original six or whatever are going to be in it and we go back to the first one um it's just full circle it, it uh on, on that note of new york um can we talk about uh loki for a second again loki <laughs> so he has a movie he has a tv series coming out which is what that really? was yes i have no idea interesting i had no clue that was like, that's exactly why that happened where he stole the space stone oh yeah. how cool i'm excited and now. stealing and... the stones creates branch timeline <laughs> timelines i think that's how it works we'll talk so, about the way she talks tilda swinson's character says that so long as the stones get back everything will come back together that's the point she's trying to make. That's that. So long as they're, you put them back where they are, it doesn't matter what happens. Things will work out fine. That's the point she's driving across. Okay. So like, think of it as like there's a stream with a bunch of little streams in it, um, and they can diverge a little bit, but they all just stay in one stream. Does that make sense? Sure. We'll talk about. Sure. We'll talk about time travel in the negative timey, section. Timey wibbly wobbly, timey yeah. wimey stuff. Timey wimey, yeah. Um. My favorite characters were Hawkeye, Ant-Man, Captain, and Nebula. I thought they all got so much, and it's cool because they were all barely a part of Infinity War. Even Cap was, like, barely there, to be honest. So they're like, okay, let's let's give these guys a chance to shine. Um, man, Ant-Man and, Wal- and Hawkeye were so good, and Nebula had such a mm-hmm. good character arc between her movies. Ant-Man literally stole the show in this movie, I feel. He, yeah. he was so L- useful. L- he literally was the catalyst. Oh, um, yeah. Bradley brought up a thing where he's like, after the five-year time skip, everyone had given up, right? Oh, yeah. So let me kind of say this in the, I I think, the original phrasing I had is that what at the beginning of the movie, when it's still like right after Thanos did the snap, everybody kind of has this attitude of like, okay, we got to go get him. We got to try to do something about this. Like everyone still has that spark. Like this is not okay. We have to do something about it. Heroic spark. He did. After those five years pass, virtually everybody has just resigned. They're like, no, like this is just how it is. You have to get used to it. When Not Ant-Man right. comes out of the uh, quantum realm, he hasn't had those five years to resign. He has that same attitude they had right after the snap. He's like, no, are you guys fucking serious? Like, no, we have to do something. We're not just going to sit down. And I think it's a nice contrast to see how all these characters had resigned over time um it's it's just, it's a stark contrast to how they were with the initial in the initial fallout um but they needed that spark to uh get them back into it mm-hmm. he was a big hero um i really like the scene where the building blows up and i was super scared he died but oh. he's the one that saves everyone in that scene like all the Damn. normal superheroes are dying and like they're drowning and shit and hawkeye's running from the dumb dog things and it's like ant-man is gonna save everyone and he does it it was so good and then mm-hmm. hawkeye gets to be the running back for a little bit i was um, so because that... <laughs> i feel like in uh, some of the older movies uh black widow and hawkeye sometimes got the shorter end of the stick compared to the people who are usually the biggest on the posters like Thor and Iron Man and Cap and stuff. They weren't the action people. They were the rounded character people every this time. Movie, they got to shine so hard and I loved it. Speaking of their suicide scene, that was one of the best action scenes of the movie for me because it was so emotionally charged. And the choreography was great, right? 
Um, Clint's like, I'm gonna do it, and then he gets like swept kicked, and then he shoots the arrow and blows up Natasha, and then he jumps like later, and then she grabs him and hooks him on, and then she dies, which was a big twist. I'm like, Clint's of course gonna die. Um, you could really see it going either way, and I think I had uh, told you about this. I was really satisfied because um, I feel like it's really rare in cinema for them to let the girl make the sacrifice play. It's always like a thing like, oh, the man has to be, you know, take take charge, be the one to do it. I was like, oh, they're not going to kill her. Obvi- like, she's going to fight for it, but obviously they're going to kill him. But no, they let they her do it. it. I think mm-hmm. it works so much better. She, because, she has a movie coming out too, which is surprising. Yeah, I think it works so much better because for the past five years, <clears throat> that's all she lived for. Like, she never stopped trying to fix things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, I talked about the time skip. I like uh, the tone after the time skip. Let's talk about the hype moments. Um, Avengers about... Assemble. Uh, oh Tyler, what do you want to talk about? Fat Thor. Oh, okay, let's talk about Fat Thor. Um, he's in my negative side because I, I thought I get why he's that way, and I got some good laughs in the beginning. Um, but I thought that he was too much of a pathetic joke. And yeah. I get why he was like that. It was really good that he was like that, but they pushed it a bit too much to where the worst part of the movie is the Thor Dark World portion where Rocket's trying to get through to him and he's being kind of annoying and the annoyingness goes on for just a tad too long. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was hoping by the end of the movie he would become, you know, the awesome god of thunder again, but he just kind of stayed fat. the um, Fortnite master. Well, well, no, I, Noob Master 69 is the Fortnite master. Well, I mean, that's, <laughs> Master 69 is like the villain of the next big saga of the MCU. We're yeah. kind of set up for that. You guys, what if Thanos was in Fortnite in the, in the movie? That would, that would have been kind of, oh, kind of fucked. <laughs> they put the World Destroyer in Fortnite. <laughs> it's just, I, I, like, I, I agree with you. It was like, it was funny at first, and I wanted, like... I was like, okay, is he gonna not be fat? You know, like is I that ever gonna? I don't necessarily mind that he stayed fat. It's kind of fun to have a fat character also in the heroes. I can cosplay as him now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he, he never became like really serious. Like he didn't have to get buff again, but um, oh, even in, in fight he, he got serious at the end. Uh, I felt like that was yeah. cool. All right, hype moments. Um, um, wait, wait, no, I didn't huh? talk about Fat Thor. Okay, let's talk about Fat Thor. Never, oh, no, Fat Thor. Because cause I like Fat Thor, Thor, and it it kind of, and I, I agree with you that Dark World went on a little bit too long than what was going on there. Um, but at the same time, I really do like what it meant for his character and like what the, and closing out Thor's character arc of just being like, you know, the idea of like he's supposed to be king of asgard he's supposed to be this champion and then like um he kind of goes through this process of like you know he likes being a goofball and he likes kind of being offbeat and this this weird character not having a whole lot of responsibilities but he feels like he has to do that and like there's that scene at the beginning of the movie when they kill thanos and they're like, what'd you do? And he cuts off Thanos' head. And he's like, what'd you do? That for is like, I went for the head. And he just he just walks away. He like he has nothing else to say. He doesn't even like leave with everybody. He just walks he looks away. defeated. Like, it's like um, he realizes Thanos made it so they can't reverse it. And now all he has is this pity, anger, and revenge that he takes off. And he's really cold about it. And he just flies away. And like yeah, and it, it's really and good. It's kind of, and it's that's a very human moment for this character which is great because it's like the mom says like you know you failed you're you're failure you're absolutely right that just makes you like everyone else like it's okay you're you're, you can get it but you just gotta get over it you gotta just keep going forward and you just have to roll with the punches and keep going and like you know the best moment is when he like sticks his hand out and he's he gets his hammer again yes and and he realizes he's still that part yeah. actually made me very. I was like, "Wait, didn't he just ruin something for yes. that?" Yes. Like, no, <laughs> no, because at the very end, Captain America goes back with a hammer, and so he drops it off with him. He did. Like, I, I, I noticed that part, and I was like, "Wait, 
why did he take the hammer with him? And then he didn't come back with it. I was like, ah, okay, that that, that gets wrapped up. Cool. Um, yeah. I have one more thing to say. I don't know, I really like Thor in general, but I think in these last two movies... Well, actually, in Ragnarok and this one, he was a little too bumbling. Um, and I thought in Infinity War they did a lot really good stuff with this character. Um uh, it- yeah, Thor and Infinity War is my favorite part of that whole movie. It, it's like a yeah. myth you're Honestly, watching unfold. It's best, so dope. Best character, best uh, best character in Infinity War is Thor. Um, yeah, I can agree with that. Okay, uh, next up we got um, right the hype moments. moments. Uh, Avengers Assemble, man. Okay, <sighs> fucking the best oh, bit I, of I action feel... in the movie. Hold on, you should reverse that and like go in order because I feel like. Well, that's the first. Like action no, it's hype not. moment for the me. The first thing that happens that's action hype moment is when he picks up the goddamn hammer. Are you shitting me right mm-hmm. now, Willer? Sorry. Ooh. Okay, sorry. I was about to get to that. I was about to say that my favorite action point of the movie is Captain America with the hammer and shield combo 1v1 against Thanos. That was... I was making the loudest noises. I was oh jumping God, in my so seat. Cool. Yeah. That, that's that a... was hype at, the, at its maximum. I feel that's... Like, yeah, I feel like Willer and I were in similar situations because I saw him pick up the hammer, and, and I started jumping. I was like, I I almost yelled in my theater. Oh, like I, I almost yelled and was a bad patron. I, oh no, I, everybody I did small in our yells. theater was yelling. Yeah. Um, the as soon as the hammer started nudging and like Thor was, or I think Thor was about to die, right? And the hammer starts nudging. I was like, that's not going to Thor. That's going to Cap. I just, yep. I immediately knew, and it actually happened. And he did cool shit with it, like he just knew how to use it, which is whatever. It's cool. He smashed the ground, and a lightning bolt struck down. I was like, oh. I think, I think you can just kind of say like he's fought with Thor enough to know like yeah. he he spins down the strap. He, he knows the moves. Yeah, he's probably they've they spent enough times together to like know what he does. So yeah, uh, what, what about when he tosses the hammer behind, like throws the shield, tosses the hammer behind oh, Thanos, oh bounces God. off the shield and knocks him in the back of that. Oh, yeah. So good. The, the, the combo of him using a shield and hammer, it was mm-hmm. pinnacle. Um, that whole, the best action scene in the movie is the three V one. And it culminates with that one V one. And uh, I stood up even better with <laughs> Thor just being like, I knew it. Yeah, I knew you could do it. <laughs> That's a, that's a that's a big callback to Age of Ultron yeah, because with the that party, party scene. scene and Thor like has this like freak out moment like ah uh. in the party <laughs> scene it's like yeah. um everyone's trying to pick up the hammer Clint gives up pretty quick he's like this is kind of silly I can't do it he was the first one to go Tony is stubborn about it he tries to use his gauntlet he tries to borrow borrow Rhodey and he can't do it which is still like Tony <laughs> yes exactly Hulk Hulk tries to do it and he's like oh, I can't do it and then he pretends to Hulk out and everyone in the party's like oh you're you're being a goofball right now you're a big loser he's like Natasha you should do it and she's she immediately is like no uh she clearly doesn't think she's worthy enough so she doesn't even try right cap gets it he budges it a little zoom in on Thor's face he's like uh uh-huh. And then Cap <laughs> stops trying. You can tell, like, he, like, kind of doesn't really try very hard. Maybe as a partial, like... Well, well like, I, th- I feel like, too, there is that really speaks about Cap's character. Where, yes. like, everyone else was really, like... Uh, they tried other gimmicks to, to pick up the hammer. Like, Banner, like, you feel like like he's half-heartedly trying to go Hulk mode to pick up the hammer. Like, mm-hmm. it's kind of a joke, but also, like, really trying to muster Hulk to do that. Iron Man gets Rhodey in his gauntlet and stuff, but I Cap just goes over, tries to pick it up, and just like, oh, okay, whatever, and like sits back down. Like he's very humble about the fact that he can't pick it up. It was a different way from how Hawkeye did it, because Hawkeye was like, This is clearly I can't and and Cap comes from a place of humbleness, like you said, and almost like he doesn't yeah. want to hurt Thor's feelings. And then when Thor sees him sit down, Thor has like a, a smile of relief. And yeah. it all culminated to that moment where he's wielding it, and Thor has a Stormbreaker, and they switch access for a little bit there. <laughs> and he's like, Give me I that want one. the big one. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to go through a couple of negatives. Yeah. I did have. Wait, wait. So much more in that scene, because you have uh, the girl power moment, you have the football chase, uh, you have. Those go into the mixed category for me for reasons. Really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it, I'll, I'll get to it now. It's the big fight thing I was mentioning before. It It's better in this movie, though, um, for sure. I thought just because of the sheer hype of Avengers Assemble, 
Um, but uh, you lose a lot of the characters in the chaos. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but you get cool stuff like uh, the kind of forced but also hype girl moment. Um, it was just really cool to see them all line up and like they just keep showing up one after the other. It's like holy shit, there's a lot of them now. Yeah, this is like, cool. Man. The best yeah, one is when like three <laughs> when Wasp <laughs> pops up. It's like oh god. Um, and then uh, Captain Marvel. She goes into the problem category, but uh, yeah. Uh, but like, uh, there's. I'm trying to think of any other cool things that I can remember. Drax there's... jumping on a dude's back and just stabbing yeah. the shit out of it. Uh, I vividly <laughs> remember that. I mean, going giant and then straight up like sucker punching a whale, a space whale, to the ground. Good, good one. Fantastic. See, this is why. This is why I, I prefer this one to Infinity War's big fight. Um, yeah. Well, I feel like whenever we like each of those like shots of them doing stuff that looks like a splash screen in or a splash page in a comic. Yeah. Like oh, you, yeah. would, like you would be flipping through like 10 or 15 pages and it'd be nothing but these big long panel shots of this fight going on i like the football sequence where clint starts with it um uh and then t'challa takes it and then spider-man takes it and then he he gets it to the time machine or whatever which didn't well he passes off to like the the girl squad and marvel and that Marvel kicks uh, ass. That's a. I wish. I kind of wish that segment was a little bit longer. Like that. That was kind of like the start. Yeah, of... That. That. That's the problem with the segment. The girls didn't actually do anything. Mark after Marvel yeah. just kind of charged through. <laughs> yeah, but it like, was... well, I mean, like, I, I like the idea of like we have the thing. We have to get to point from point A to point B. Like, there's some sort of. Uh, meta objective going on on the battlefield which uh-huh. is a lot more interesting than like let's all punch each other which was yes. what infinity war was god was... You know you, yeah that's 100 percent right the gauntlet kind of made that yeah um and you can say infinity war is like well they were defending the gym like yeah but that's not like there's not any dynamics going on in that battlefield it's just team a is protecting objective a yeah. sorry i'm getting really loud um objective a while team b is trying to get to objective a there's no dynamic going on on the battlefield where they have to avoid certain things or there's just so much cool stuff going on um but yeah but that whole segment though and the the shot also were like the the whole army gets called down and then there's just cap and it's him and you just see him like standing up against the entirety of thanos's and army he's gonna do it he's gonna go die like he's yeah. willing mm-hmm. with a broken shield mind you mm-hmm. uh hype moments for me uh Pepper Potts, Miss Iron Man. God. Her suit Iron looked Woman. incredible. Her suit yeah. so cool. Uh, so that was fantastic, and I'm so happy that they showed her. Like, that's what I think she was able to do that because of Iron Man 3. Mm-hmm. You brought that up It, it showed yeah. she had some fight to her, and then the, the, for, like, the foreshadowing at the beginning of the movie where it had the blue helmet that is, Morgan was playing with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it showed that even though Tony Stark was not doing anything, he was still being Tony Stark. Yeah. He, he wasn't resting. He was still working on stuff. Um, Maybe as a hobby, like, without a goal in mind, but he was like, I'm going to build a couple more suits. and Yeah. You know, casually find out time travel in a week. D- d- yeah, of course. That That's the... I feel like that's a downer, but... Also, uh, Peter Parker, instant kill mode, activate. <laughs> I feel like that was uh, well-deserved. I feel like he needed that. You know, he's like really he's like doing his Spider-Man thing, like doing commentary on it the entire time as he's zipping through. He's like, instant kill mode, activate. And then he just really like stabbing hug, everything around him. The hug he gives Tony. Um, I think it's midway through the fight even. Tony sees Peter and he's like, come here. You're, you're my son. Like... Let me give you a hug, and then of course, when Tony's dying, um, yeah. that the ending scene with Peter and Tony dying is a great kind of reflection on like the scene from Infinity War. Yes, it it, it it's a great callback moment for that movie. Mm. He's that, become he's become his second Uncle Ben. Can the kid get a break? Yeah, it's really? basically like that is his Uncle Ben for the purposes of like this universe. universe. Yeah. yeah. Which well, is he, better. He which also better. has Uncle Ben. It just happened off screen. This is right. the screen like, Uncle Ben. But for the purposes of us as a viewer going forward, like that's going to be the thing that affects, I feel, Spider-Man most. Is that like this is his role model, the guy that gave him his suit, the guy that basically told him, like, you can be a superhero and you're good at it. Like That 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 was his icon. And now yes. he's, he literally died in front of them. That's, um, that's going to ripple for him for ages. 
but yeah. I, I like how every single one of the relevant characters of Spider-Man's crew died in the snap so that they could all be the same age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, let me nitpick a little bit. Um, the more you think about the time travel, the worse it gets. <laughs> so let's not well, let's not delve but, too into it. I'm just going to say, uh, in the end, yeah. uh, the time travel ended up being a negative um, I, for, uh, on a for plot me, level. Yeah, for me, the the way they did tri- time travel, I like it so much more than like, you know, Back to the Future and whatnot, and and just it, because it's much more interesting, and it it lets you at the very beginning of the movie just go like, don't worry about all that, just worry about these facts, and then you kind of go with it because they because they're, they're contradicted in the same movie. But like, but are they though? <laughs> Yeah, they Cause are. Hulk, because Hulk literally says, like, you can't change anything. That's true. The The one thing that's the big contradiction is Cap showing up at the end. Yes. That's the biggest offender. But everything else is kind of very much Hulk saying, like, it, it doesn't matter what you do. It's a different timeline, so it can't change your past, so it won't change anything when we come back here. That That's the big takeaway, though. Um, um, I never really liked time travel in anything, so as soon as I found out that time travel would be a big aspect of it, uh, I was just kind of like, I'm just gonna turn on my brain or the parts I don't like, and I'm just gonna focus on the rest of the movie. It it um it led to, of course, the f- great fan service with the traveling back in time. Everything was yeah. good. To- the only real problem is, you know, the overall rules and what they do with Cap and what it means for the future. Um, but also it leads to such an emotional moment with Cap where it's like, even though I hate it, there's positive sides to it, so it evens out. Um, Cap getting that final dance, even. It's great, you know. Oh man, it killed me. It's just, it's, it's just to me like, um, yeah, sure. If you think about it, you're like, well, this doesn't make sense. But time travel in any time travel movie never makes sense. There's so, better instances of it. I, I don't, I don't think so. Like of what I've seen, especially for like this scale of thing. Like it's just you, it, it, it just, it's much more cleaner and leaves a lot less open. Poss- like it doesn't. <laughs> There's it doesn't incriminate any of the previous movies. That's there's the a, thing. there's a series that we enjoy that does time travel better, and because it limits it, you know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. I know what Tyler. you're talking about, but that, but that that's that's not the same. I know, that's... I know, but that's an example. And uh, I there's a there's the Zero Escape series that kind of spoiled me on time travel from doing it so well. Um, but, you know, yeah, it, it still had its positives. I, I just had to turn my brain off. I, hell, I like it in JoJo's when they go back in time. Um, because at least it has weird stand rules that, like, it's not a split timeline. It it has this weird end goal that it's going to reach. Anyways. Yeah, move let, on because uh, people are probably tired of listening to us. Um, I we've, we've been going on pretty long. Uh, big clutter fight I talk about. Action scenes in general I talked about my favorites. Which was... Really, there, there wasn't much action in the movie. It was very character-driven. Which was good. Which was surprising, but also good. Yeah. Very character and, like, conversation-driven. Like, the only kind of action I could think of was them fighting Thanos at the beginning and the end, the Cap v. Cap scene. And, like, that's it. Um, Captain Marvel, I thought, was disappointing. It's like, hey, let's remove this character out of the plot and just have her come back in the end because physically she can solve any threat they run into. So uh, I was felt actually lazy. very satisfied about that. Um, and the reason that? is because whenever I first learned we were introducing Captain Marvel to the movie and they said she would be um, instrumental in uh, Endgame, I was like, okay. I, I kind of said it before. I was like, oh, well, she's just going to sweep everything and then our characters aren't going to get their big moments. Um, so when Endgame came around, we were presented with the problem how do we make it so Captain Marvel isn't just there steamrolling everything the entire movie? Um, and I think they solved that in a very believable way in that the reason she hasn't been around for the entire MCU and the reason she's gone for most of the game is that the terrible things and the fallout that's happening on Earth is happening all over the universe. Mm-hmm. And aren't everywhere in the universe. Here's the problem, though, with that. That makes sense. Until you realize that the heroes have the plot that will reverse everything. Why isn't she there in the past? If she was in the past, any single time a confrontation comes up, she could take a stone by force. You know, well, she wasn't there when they came up with the plan to go into the past. They couldn't. Yeah, she wasn't. Her. 
I know, but like they couldn't contact her and be no, like, hey. She like literally says, you will not hear from me for a while. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, like, I'm satisfied with how they handled her in this movie, actually. I, I actually sat there and I was with Bradley. I was like, I, I, did anybody call? I was like, did anybody call Captain Marvel? Because they right. all just kind of like started doing time travel. I, mean, I imagine they did. It's just she probably is on the other side of the galaxy. And I bet commuting times is a bit of a bitch. Fighting dark well, Adam, uh, Adam, Adam Warlock, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um,. It's weird, though, because it's like, okay, the battle's been going on for 20 minutes, and she she must have, like, okay, she's on this planet, all the dusted people are back. She's like, oh, they reversed it, maybe I should check up on Earth. She gets there in 20 minutes, you know, um, cool. And so, like, um, even if she was there for the time travel stuff, they didn't do that much fighting in the time travel stuff, right. and they wanted to keep a low profile. Her wrecking everybody wouldn't she, be very low profile. She could have... <laughs> The other thing is, too, you have to realize, is that when they time travel, they come right back to when they left. Like, so, like, they could have easily, like, called her and, like, hey, we're doing this thing, and then she doesn't have time to get to where she needs to get to, and then they come right back to where they started. It wasn't, like, it was a whole day later they snapped their fingers. It was literally, like, five minutes after, in real time, that they they do everything else. That That's what happens. It's not like, oh, we're just... And now we wait a few days, and then we do it. It's it's not that. It's they go as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So she's mm -hmm. so I I think it's reasonable to say like it takes a while for her to get back to Earth. I'm saying she went back to Earth too fast, but but know. like I, even then, I think it's fine. Like it's she has a bunch of stuff that's going on, and you know she might have been. I don't know. Like I feel like it's it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's a small negative. It doesn't. I, I I agree with you though. She is just kind of shoehorned in there at the end, beginning. She's so strong, man. It's kind of yeah, ridiculous. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> the headbutt was pretty funny. It's like oh my was, god, that was good. I also Thanos like her. Saw it out of her league. Oh, dude, like, her haircut's great. Uh, I watched it with my family for a second time, and they're like, I hate her. I'm like, are you all kidding me? That's like perfect personification of who she is. It mm. it's it's like it's rebellious. It's different. It's Ugly is not the right term, but it's not normal. It's very like foreign to a more mainstream conservative Texas family. So yeah. that perfectly <laughs> represents who she is. Um, um, okay, my final point of Endgame is I think Thanos wa was done kind of poorly. Um, <sighs> I maybe it's because he's early in his journey in life. He just comes out a little bit more generic. It is, it is because of that. Like, yeah, but yeah, it is because of that. I don't know. It's after seeing him be so fleshed out, seeing him be generic is a bit sad. And I was saying that the main thing I want to see whenever I see Thanos is stone powers. Um, he didn't use a single one. He making he used one. He used one. He used the power stone and punch Marvel. True. Um, and that was about it. I was hoping that he would get the gauntlet, but like. Be the gauntlet would be fucked, so he couldn't channel it properly, so he couldn't do the snap, but he could still channel individual uh, gems. So then we could have gotten, like, a that would have helped the action of the movie for me a lot, because he does so much cool stuff in the Titan fight. Then if he um, can't do the snap, then what's even the point of getting the gauntlet? Well, exactly. he can take the gems back home and then just build a new gauntlet and but, do but the then, snap. But, Willard, that's the thing, too. If he just needs the gems, it's once again like, all right, I have the space gem, I leave. That's all he needs at that point. It's the when we've already have had to me uh, Infinity you Gauntlet. Solve that by yes. having Tony steal the space gem and he keeps the other five. I don't know. There's I, ways. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's all I got for Endgame. Yeah. I just I like the movie and it to me it like it took my expectations and shot way above them and hit every mark for me in terms of what I wanted in a wrap up of the Infinity Saga of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, so, I just, I was satisfied, and I watched it, I went, I've seen it a second time. I'm gonna see it a third time this week with my dad. Uh, but, like, I saw it the second time, I was worried, like, if I, when I see it the second time, I wonder if I'm gonna like it less. And I, and I didn't. I liked it the same. Nice. Which, which I think is good really sign. good, because it means that it's, it's solid, um, and when I watch those emotional scenes again, I still got the same kind of emotion. Uh, so that's that's like really good. It shows that they made a solid film mm -hmm. in terms of what they were trying to accomplish. I feel like we could talk another two hours about uh, 
in game. Oh, easily. Like, there's a million little things I'd love to go into, but um, give I think us your final thoughts, boys. Things, and uh, if you're listening to this, you've probably, I mean, you've probably seen the movie. I hope. So, yeah. Um, we don't need to go through every second of the movie. And, and, it, and if you haven't seen the movie, you literally probably went to the worst source to hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the what the roundabout cast provides you. All right, y'all got anything else to say? It's still probably still five out of five at worst, four point five for me. Um, it's amazing movie. Joe, you got you got one in. Tyler, Bradley, five, five out of five. Easy five. Out five. It's a five out of five for me. It I can't was... wait. Yeah, for the 4K box set of all 22 movies to come out. Oh, oh yeah. man, that's, that's like going to be like an instant buy, I think, for me, that, when I have money for it, because it's, yeah, good it's, stuff. It's, it's it's good. Um, yeah. All right, uh, let's. I mean, Bradley, since you wrote down your points for One Piece, let's do that and call it. Yeah. Um, let's yeah. Go we'll right into it. Let everybody go after this. Everyone's probably uh, very exhausted. This is longest longest episode we've had for sure. Yeah, uh, One Piece was a pretty short segment last week. Um, I was able to get some good progress this week, so I hope everybody is excited. I have a little more direction here. I wrote down the notes, the positives and negatives I want to talk about. Let's hear them. You read um, uh, up to the beginning of Barati? Uh, I'm, a little, I'm a little bit into it. Uh, Luffy is currently chore boy, but I'm okay. probably <laughs> the beginning of it. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was so brave for Oda to actually... Will he do the one year of Luffy and the... <laughs> that would have been crazy. <laughs> uh, I really like the setting of that. I think it's a fun setting. And from what I've heard of One Piece, that's not even close to the most interesting, unique setting we're going to yeah. get. I, I'm, I'm going to just be very brief because you're just getting started. But I think that arc is probably my lowest ranked arc of all of One Piece. The, uh, and... the one th- with that introduces Sanji here. Yeah, and, and the only reason why is because I think it just goes on for way too long. See, Bradley is usually not affected by that. Um, I think it goes... Yeah. I think one fight's too long. I really like the themes of the arc and... Oh, no, like, but... everything else on it is fine, but I do agree that, that there's one fight that happens, and you're just like, but... can we move past this but already? Bradley, let's talk about Kura yeah. and yeah. his arc. Yeah, so we can do... He, uh, one of my bullet points is about him. We can do the negatives before the positives, and there's not that many, actually. Oh, okay, nice. Um, and I can just kind of read them word for word since I already typed them out, um, as I would probably say them. So I didn't like Kuro that much. Um, Same. As far as his design and personality, I thought he was a lot more bland than the extremely colorful buggy that we had before him. Um, his dialogue I felt was very cliche during a lot of his fighting I feel like you could almost predict what he was going to say before he said it Um, the most interesting thing to me about him um, and his ex-crew was all the cat themed uh, names for their attacks which were really fun like holy they had so many puns I wouldn't think of Yeah. Uh, and while Kuro, Kuro Kuro whatever while he technically had a more interesting motivation than someone like Buggy, who's just a pirate being a pirate, uh, in the end, he came off as less interesting. And I don't know, it might just be, I don't think his character design is as cool as Buggy, so That's I don't fair. know. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely feel the most positive about Kuro. Maybe Tyler likes him too. I know Joe doesn't very much. But what, what I like about Kuro is um, the fact that he is so excited at the prospect of killing kaya to me is kind of fucking terrifying yeah here you have this butler that's been just every day he you know he's thinking about like oh i can't wait to kill you and like he kind of shows that pretty well and kaya is really distraught when like the truth is coming out um i really like how strategic he is i actually like his design the cat claws are dope i like his little shit uh jacket it's got little poops on it um oda has acknowledged it so it's canon (laughs) <laughs> and um, and I like how he's like, if you guys don't fucking finish off these scrub pirates in five minutes, I'm gonna kill everyone here with my attack. Yeah, it's just like we get he's a monster, but does he have to be that much of a monster? Well, he's so ready to clean everything so he can make his clean escape. I mean, he, he's his past kind of leads us to believe as such. So it's like I, I buy it. Um, so yeah, I, that, I like Kuro. I just 
for me for Kuro is he he almost is given a disservice. Like Kuro would have been better if he was a reoccurring character that went on for several arcs and then is revealed to be this big bad guy. I feel because you, sure. you 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 experience that journey almost like even a part of it. But like number one being is that he compared to his crew i think he's very blandly designed even though he's cleverly designed i think he's just very bland in his design um i think and he's just i I don't know that there's no quality to me like bradley said that makes him fun he's just kind of i got you big monster man that's going to kill this girl this sick girl he's very he's pretty serious yeah yeah and and which is a huge contrast because there's Man, no one in One Piece is serious. Well, I wouldn't say that, but they all got some quirks. Tyler, do you got anything about Kuro? Uh, is it Kuro? The the cat boy in the Usopp arc. With the long finger knives. Oh, I, this was a cool character. I really like claw hands. Me too. So that that was just me. It, it kind of showed, like, pirates aren't always going to be just dumbasses. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, he hasn't come back. I, I seen like glim- I think we've seen a glimpse or two of him. Not even, but that's slight like spoilers. Maybe in the anime, I it. think, during those filler bits, you know. Pa- he hasn't even had a cover arc or anything. He's like the one One Piece character who just disappeared off the face of the earth. Mm. All right, next point, Bradley. Yeah, uh, I only have one other negative point before we get into the stuff that I really liked and I'm excited to talk about. Um, as far as the Usopp arc, so. Now, in in the current arc I'm in, I like Usopp a lot better. Um, Fair. During his introductory arc, I didn't really sympathize with his plight a lot, and I think I talked about that last week. You did, yeah. Um, I feel bad for his past, for sure, and him losing his parents was... um, That was very sad. I was actually touched when uh, we kind of saw that scene. But in the present day, despite that and his explanation for why he does the stuff that he does, he still kind of comes off as an ass to me still a punk bitch like i'm mostly talking about his like extremely dutiful annoyance of the entire town Mm -hmm. like his his resolve not to tell the town about the actual invasion was honorable when it was happening um but kind of like i think i said this exact sentiment last week but when the few people find out that the pirates actually are coming and that usopp was right Um, they, and especially Mary, are like, oh no, why didn't we listen to him? He was actually a brave young man. I feel so bad. And I'm like, you don't have to feel bad. Why would you listen? Like, you had every reason not to believe him. Mm -hmm. Um, In in an alternate universe where Koro actually was Kaya's faithful butler and not planning to kill her, uh, I'd probably be totally on his side, and I was totally on his side until we found out he was evil. Nice. Uh, let's do the positives. The positives. So, um, I really love the moment at the end of the Usopp arc when Usopp was heading out to sea at the same time as Luffy's gang. And as he's climbing into a ship, they're like, what the hell are you doing? Like, like come get on our ship. Yeah, uh, so good. That's a it's great just, moment. The entire time you've been reading the arc, you've just kind of assumed the outcome is going to be Usopp joining the crew. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like how confident Oda is because he knows that he's presented his story story in such a way that the reader would be thinking the exact same thing that Luffy and Zoro are thinking. Um, and I just kind of like that he was able to do that. Like Luffy and Zoro say exactly what he knows the reader's thinking. Like what Usopp's not joining. Like, come on, like get on shit. Come on, man. Everybody knows. I like how Usopp is like, yeah, can I be captain? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah. I like the part where Zoro's just like, he's just he literally like has his back turned to him and he's just like get on the ship <laughs> like he's, um yeah yeah they're very matter of fact about it uh i really like usopp's goodbye with his crew yeah um very much another so. thing i like that was pretty short um it was like one or two panels where um you know usopp and luffy are doing their thing like oh who's gonna be captain i'm gonna be captain whatever um and usopp's like fine i'll let you be the captain for now but if you ever show cowardice, I'm going to take over in a heartbeat. And Luffy immediately responds with, fine with me. And if Ooh. any other character said this, I would interpret it as them just kind of brushing Usopp off like, yeah, yeah, whatever, you can take over. 
But with Luffy, I believe he actually truly means it. He's like, yeah, if I ever show cowardice, that's not what a that's unbecoming of a captain, and I'll be fine with you taking over. Good freaking point, man. That's a good catch. Yeah. Um. So I really that, like that line. I I will say I actually think that comes up again. I think later in a very special arc, Willard, that you know about. Yes. The arc I think of One Piece, the quintessential One Piece arc. I feel. Yes. Um. So yeah, but that is good catch. Very nice. I'm uh I'm glad to hear it. Um. Last big positive point. Uh. This is another one that. Um, it was kind of only like one or two panels, but it really stuck out to me. So pretty much immediately after Luffy defeats the like black cat pirates and they're all gone, he kind of lays down exhausted on the beach and he's talking with Nami. Um, and he just kind of reflects on the experience and he's just like, God, those pirate, like, he's like, I hate them. They're no good. Like, how could they do this stuff? And Nami looks at him and she's like, Luffy, they're, they're pirates. Yeah. And kind of in a way where you can just imagine her tone being like, what did you expect? Like this is, yes. you know how pirates make their living, right? Yeah. Um, it's but there's very, a reason, yeah. Hold on. There's a reason. Yeah. I really like this. Um, while Nami probably has a way stronger inherent bias against pirates than most people, she kind of has a point. I think the line shows how different Luffy and his, his personality and ambitions are to most of the rest of the pirates in the world. He's going to be king of the pirates and he's going to do it differently than most pirates might. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, this made me realize that Luffy is always so adamant about doing things like a true pirate and behaving the way he believes a real pirate should. Uh, but he's so very different than most of the pirates we've seen up to this point. And I realized that growing up, Pretty much the only pirates he interacted with were Shanks and his crew. And Shanks is a very honorable pirate, almost like anomalously honorable. And since Shanks and his crew are Luffy's like reference for what a pirate is, Luffy has a much brighter image of what a true pirate is in his head than, say, the people in the rest of the world who only know pirates as people who raid their towns. So when Luffy encounters these violent, violent, violent pirates doing things that pirates do, he sees them as the weird ones. Oh, they're, they're not acting like true pirates, but it's probably more accurate that they're being normal pirates and doing what pirates do. But this made me realize that I think over the course of this epic journey that Luffy is getting into, I think a big part of it will be that his influence will spread and throughout the world, he will influence and change what people see as being a true pirate. And he will change the image of what a pirate is. And Damn. that's all I have to say about that. That's some good analysis. Um, Luffy has a very, very specific worldview of what a pirate is. And it, I think it's very much stems from the freedom and the adventure of a pirate. And those are the, his big takeaways. He doesn't have the greed that also comes with being a pirate um and i think that really sets him apart from these early yeah. crews that we're meeting it also shows like he has an inherent resolve like this kid is super tough super strong super brave and it's not just because haha he's the main character it's more like the story could only follow this kind of guy in in yeah. this world the, the story has to follow someone with this kind of mindset like he's the only one that could do it absolutely because, um, like, the kind of person Luffy is, like, I kind of knew about his personality going in. Um, and I traditionally don't like characters like Luffy, but sure. the reason I like him in One Piece is because of how starkly he contrasts the kind of people he's fighting. Because, like, in Dragon Ball Z, Goku is very much like Fight the way he fights. But um, Luffy is very a very different kind of pirate it seems and um i think that contrast is what makes him interesting so uh, well, i was so very you... excited to i was very excited to share that stuff i'm i'm getting some good stuff out of one piece i mean I'm, i like that you gave it a three out of five which gave joe the prediction point yeah, yeah. I for Usopp. but there, there was definitely uh stuff in there that i liked and i tried to bring that up 
Me, me and Joe try to predict how much Bradley would like the arc, so we're keeping a tally. And we all who's, love who's winning, Joe? Uh, you're winning by one point, I think. Good. Next arc, we're both. Well, this arc would be a big deciding one, but then the arc after that, we're both getting a point. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, if you if you don't give it the score that we think you're gonna give it, we are gonna be shocked because. Um, what I was gonna say about Nami, I mean that line is that, that I feel like that will become even more relevant in the arc after the one you're currently reading. Yeah. Um, because not not to give anything away, but that's a very Nami centric arc. Mm-hmm. Nami's great. Yeah. Uh, uh, what are your uh, early impressions on Baratie before we, uh, we wrap up here? Uh, I I love the setting. I think it's very interesting. I I think even like. Just like the individual background shifts, kind of have their own fun personality. Yeah. Uh, Sanji is kind of instantly likable for me. Very cool guy. He's, obviously, I don't know much about him, but he kind of seems like a more stylish combat Brock. So. <laughs> uh, you're you're not wrong. You're super uh, right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, no, yeah. I like it. But man, Sanji to me. Um, is up there in, like, top, like, five, maybe even top three of the Straw Hat crews and people in One Piece in general. Uh, and, and we, I gushed about this previously on the couch sitting with you, and, and that was even before I read an arc that was, that, that changed my hope, not really changed, but really solidified my perspective on Sanji. Big, big Sanji uh, things later on. Big, huge Sanji things, and Sanji's a great character. And he's I such a rock, he, you know? He, yeah, he is. Uh, the, well, you already know the... he's joining, so... Yeah. <laughs> That's not a spoiler. Well, he, he knows the One Piece rap, duh! True. You know that there's an L-A-D-Y, Nami's not fly. <laughs> I'm just not shy. Whatever, man. <laughs> Zolu! Uh, <laughs> uh, but I okay. hope you enjoy Barazi, uh, even though I kind of, like... I think he will. I, halfway through, I kind of dragged my head through the through the wood, I felt like when I was reading I'm very, it. I'm very satisfied, because uh, two of those points were just like, I got that much out of one line that a character said. Um, yeah. And, and you're not even wrong for looking that deep into it. Oda is doing that in, yeah. on purpose. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm extremely satisfied with uh, what I'm getting out of these characters. I thought for like... Because One Piece, in my mind, has always just kind of been like one of those standard, like, oh yeah, it's just one of those manga. I, I was like oh it's just one of those little battle shonens but um yeah, so I never expected the characters to have um depth. the kind of depth I'm already finding even though you guys have always told me but um in those few lines I'm I'm like I'm I'm seeing it here I really like it um if you find it this way like I find it hard to introduce one piece because I feel like the first four arcs um uh, this one day about to finish He's included blue. Yeah. The, well, not all of East Blue, but these first four arcs are very shonen. Um, and I'm like, oh man, people are out here watching Macadamia, Boku no Pico, uh, mm. fucking One Punch Man, fucking Full people Metal Alchemist. Are... Boku no Pico. <laughs> Boku, Boku no Pico de Gallo, uh, JoJo's. It's like, it's it's hard. This is from the 90s, you know, like, it doesn't have the uniqueness of JoJo, so it's like, will people like it? But the fact you're seeing the depth already, because it's easy to overlook, because Luffy is such a goofy guy. Um, all the characters are, like, very fun and colorful. Um, but the fact that you're seeing this uh, really solidifies the fact that I think you'll really like uh, after these next few arcs where One Piece starts hitting its literary stride. Because, yeah, I was um, expecting this early on to yeah. get this kind of depth out of the characters, I, but I'm seeing some stuff that works. I can't wait for you. I can't wait to hear you talk about Arlong Park because Arlong Park is up there for me in terms of like really solidifying what One Piece is. I want to like, hear him talk about Drum Kingdom. So yeah. yeah. Oh my God, Drum Kingdom. Oh God. That's such a Bradley arc. arc. That'll be yeah. next time on the Rooster Teeth podcast. No. Right. Gavin signing out. Bradley, do you have? So Tyler had to dip out. Uh, so Bradley, if you have a a theoretical, we can do it, or we can just, you know, this is the longest episode ever, so we can just also just... This uh, is the end games of Roundabout Podcast. This is it. Uh, We've been building to this moment. Uh, you walk into a bar, and Black Panther slaps your girl on the ass. What are you going to do? Wakanda forever! Wakanda forever! I, I, I am proud of my king. 
I, uh, I remember I had, a, I had asked this question to Joe before, and he gave me the best answer. I was like, Joe, Black Panther slapped the girl's ass. What are you going to do? And he's like, I turn to him and I say, Wakanda forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Keep it, keep right. it classy. Yeah. Bye. Never forget Wakanda forever. Bye-bye.